Friday Night Football right here on FATV. I'm John Gugarty. Dan Bolak will be joining me shortly. But right now, let's send it down to our sideline correspondent, Amanda Egesey. Welcome to the Falcons' first Friday night football game of the season. It's going to be a battle of the birds tonight where the Falcons are facing the Westfield State Owls. It's only about high 52 degrees out tonight, little to no wind. You know, this is perfect football weather. It's not too hot and it's not too cold. The Falcons are about halfway through their season, getting their first team win here during homecoming two weeks ago versus Mass Maritime. They then traveled to Premium State last weekend and lost 26 to 7. But you know, that speaks volumes to the improvement of the Falcon defense. And speaking of defense, tune in at halftime, where I'll be joined by alumni Malcolm Brown Simpson to talk more Falcon football. Back up to you guys. Thank you so much, Amanda. We are ready for kickoff here at Elliott Field. The Falcons taking on the Owls of Westfield State University. And here with the play-by-play -play action for the first and fourth quarter is Mr. Dan Bolak. Thank you very much, John. Falcons 1-5 and five coming into today. Westfield 3-3. Three and three. And we are underway as the opening kickoff is muffed by the Falcons. A scrum for the football. He was able to fall on it. It was Chris Tamachetti who was able to get on top of it with decent field position at the 30-yard line to start, but already a bit alarming of a beginning for the green and gold. Falcons come into this game, as we said, with a record of 1-5, and five, and uh, special teams hasn't really been the problem, but a little sloppy there. One thing you might notice, folks, doesn't this field just look beautiful at the night? I love night games here at Elliott Field. <laughs> Seems like we are able to get about one a year, and it is beautiful to watch Friday Night Lights under the field turf of Elliott Field. A little different than the grass of Crocker, but we'll take it nonetheless. First possession of the game for the Falcons in the flexbone. First down run up the left side goes next to nowhere. And it was Jaquay Salmon who had the opening carry there. Doesn't get much on it. Maybe about two yards. Andrew Carpenter on the hit for Westfield State. The Owls, Dan, come in with an offense very similar to that of Fitchburg State. They're going to look to run the ball mostly with their quarterback as well as, you know, they do have a potent running offense. But uh, the Falcons get the ball first, so we'll see what they can do to put points on the board here on their first possession. Falcons average 216 yards on the ground a game. That's second in the conference, but Westfield's the only team better with about 20 yards more. Brown takes it himself after a bit of misdirection, faking the handoff to Jaquay Solomon. He'll be forced out of bounds just past the 35-yard line. It won't be enough for a first down, but it's a very healthy gain on second down. It'll bring up third and three. We've seen this formation from Fitchburg State, the flex bone, as you called it, the past couple of weeks. Fitchburg State has all three of their best rushers in the backfield at the same time, those being Sterling Garvin, the quarterback Brandon Brown, and, of course, Jaquay Solomon. Falcons going with all three of those guys in the backfield thus far on the first possession. And Brown averaging nearly six yards a carry on the campaign. That was right in line with how he normally th goes. Throws this one over the middle on third down, looking for Herbert Acosta, but just a bit too high for him, a bit too quick. He wasn't able to climb the ladder and make the catch. And so the Falcons will go three and out on their first possession. Herbert Acosta has been dealing with injuries, you know, toward the tail end of last season and again this season, finally getting on the field here at Elliott Field. The pass, unfortunately, was a little too high for the 5-4 receiver from Los Angeles. And so the Falcons will have to punt it away. Melchior Lynch, they call him Bubba, once again going to have to do the punting duties. This one thrown on the ground. He's able to get a line drive punt off, takes a healthy bounce for Fitchburg, and this may work out well enough as it's going to be downed just short of the 20-yard line. Falcons get a big break on special teams there, but it has been a story of injuries on the kicking and punting unit. The uh, typical long snapper for Fitchburg State is Kyrie Watford. He is also injured, and the backup quarterback, Connor Fitzsimons, has been doing the long snapping for a few weeks now, but obviously still a few, uh, a few uh, kinks in the armor there. And the next person up on long snapper, just in case you're curious, is Vincent Aramo, also a quarterback for the Falcons. And so we will now see the Owls for the first time today. Jake Cassidy is the quarterback, and on first down, play action, rolls to his left, tries to set up to throw. He's not in good position to do so. He's just going to have to run for it. And he's going to get a couple yards on that one. 
Well, we were talking, Dan, about how the book on Westfield State is that they like to go for the run. Obviously, they know that their opponents know that, so they try to go play action, maybe take a shot downfield on first down, but it was well defended for Fitchburg State. Kiambu Jones wound up getting the tackle. Cassidy, he averages about 40 yards a game. However, he has fumbled the ball eight times, four of which were lost, and ultimately he only got about a yard on that ultimately. Not a whole lot there. I thought he got more, but that's just me misreading the yard markers. Nope, he was able to get back to the original line of scrimmage and really no further than that. Sets up second down and 10 for the Owls. And this time they're going to give it to Trayvon Holder, fresh off a 200-yard running game. And a great run by Holder going around the right side. He's going to get about 11 yards. There is, however, a flag down about uh, seven yards downfield, so it's not right at the line of scrimmage. Our referee is not mic'd up tonight. It's an illegal block in the back indicated against Ethan Hallett, the sophomore tight end for the Owls. So that'll back the Owls up a little bit here. So I want to talk a little bit about Trayvon Holder because he is an excellent running back, senior from Hartford, Connecticut. Again, 203 yards on the ground last week and three touchdowns. It was Mascac Offensive Player of the Week last week. Owls emerging victorious over Mass Maritime by a score of 38 to 24. And you know, Dan, owls are nocturnal birds, so they should be used to playing under the lights. I think this, let's see, from that perspective, this might benefit them. There you go. So about three minutes gone in the first quarter, second of the lot. It's going to be a pitch off to the right side for Holder. This time the Falcons flocking to the right side and not going to let Holder get a whole lot on that one. Picked up a couple. I think it's going to set up about third down and 15. Looks like the line of scrimmage will be the 18 for the third down. As he's just trying to navigate his way through the swarm of Falcons. He was trying to cut it out to the outside, but Mike August did a good job keeping containment on that left side of the defensive line. And he was able to force Holder to turn back toward the middle of the field where the rest of the defense was able to bring him down. That's a nice little shot of the Crescent Moon overlooking Elliott Field. The one thing we need, we need a steeple somewhere. Someone's got to build a church on John Fitch Highway. Third down, Cassidy scrambling. will go to his right. He's going to get as many yards as he can, but he's wrapped up by Richard Austin and taken down well short of the line to gain. And so Westfield ultimately goes a little more ambitiously, a three and out. Falcon defense was fortunate because of the illegal block in the back that backed Westfield stayed up, but the defense was able to stand strong. So now the Owls will kick it away. Fitchburg State sends two men set up deep to return at about their own 35-yard line. Herbert Acosta is one of them. Cody Cleveland is the punter for Westfield State Junior out of Northampton. Averages 39 yards a punt. So we'll have this one. It's a line drive spiral going to take at least a bounce. The Falcons going to let that one go, not take any chances with that one. And it will come to a stop at around the 31-yard line. 10.30 to go, first quarter, no score. That ball bounced very close to Herbert Acosta as well as Stephen Lawton on the Falcon return team. They were a bit lucky that it didn't bounce up and hit them. Then the Owls would have been able to recover. And considering the Falcons had already muffed a kick on the opening kickoff, they didn't want to take any chances with that. So now Fitchburg State comes back out first and 10 at their own 32. Falcons coming off a 26-7 loss to Framingham State, not Brandon Brown's best game. 14 out of 31, 83 yards, and three interceptions. On first down, a throw to the right side, complete to Herbert Acosta. He's going to try to get around as many players as he can, but he's going to be pushed back by a couple owls. The Brandon Rivera and Andrew Carpenter teaming up to push him back and stop the forward momentum. A few yards gained, though, on first down. Take a look at this one again. They're trying to set up the screen to the right side, and they get uh, not quite a block so much as a just stand in the way and make the defender run around you from Jaquay Solomon. But unfortunately, there were two or three more Owls there who were able to wrap up Acosta before he got anything else. Second down from the 36. It'll be Solomon going to the right side. 
And he's going to be down just past the 40-yard line. Not quite enough for a first down, but it'll be third and not a whole lot. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be third and a, a good one yard. Falcons go with a little bit of deception here, hand it to the man lined up to the left and have him run off tackle right. One of the big challenges for the Falcons this year has been third downs. They've only converted about one in four this year, and last week they were three for 15 on third down. Single back, this one is Garvin. Brown takes the snap out of the pistol. Garvin will take it, and he's not gonna get enough. Doesn't even get back to the line. Well, he will get back to the line of scrimmage. That's as all he's going to get. And so another unsuccessful third down for the green and gold. William Healy did a good job there on defense for the Owls. Wraps up Garvin in the backfield and Fitchburg State will kick it away. So again, Bubba Lynch will be out to try to return this one for the Owls. And again, we do want to keep an eye on the long snapping here. It's coming from the backup quarterback, Connor Fitzsimons. This, this one's, one's good. That one's a better snap indeed. And a strong punt. And it's muffed by Garvey. Looks like he's gonna be able to get on top of that one. Garvey is the lead kick returner for the Owls, but he hasn't got a punt return on the record this year. In fact, all four punt returns have been by Colin DeBarber for a total of minus eight. Well, that may have something to do with why Evan Garvey was lined up there tonight. And he tries to take the return and ends up muffing it, but Westfield recovers, so now each team has a muffed kick to their, or discredit, if you will. Both of these teams, Dan, have been a bit sloppy with the football, a lot more turn turnovers than you'd like, but as you said, each of them fortunate to hang on to a muffed kick, not even halfway through this first quarter of action. First down, and Westfield with the run, not going much of anywhere. Caleb Gonzalez came in, burst through the line of scrimmage, and just threw Garvey down. R.J. Darby was the running back on that one, sophomore from Norwich, Connecticut. He averages about five yards a carry, a solid running back for the Owls, but he gets to go nowhere as Gonzalez read the play and was right there to make the tackle. Gonzalez came bursting off that left side of the Falcon defensive line. Sophomore from Mashpee, six feet five inches tall. Saw the referee there pointing and gesticulating and yelling at both sides. Already a little testiness from the officiating crew as we duck under eight minutes to play here in the first quarter. Second down, it's gonna be Darby again. A run to the right side, found some room and got most of the yards he needed, not all of them. It'll be down at around the 38-yard line. Well, Dan, you mentioned that R.J. Darby averages five yards a carry. Obviously, he gets it, you know, zero, then 10, zero, then 10, zero, then 10. That averages out to five, right? Works well enough. So it'll bring up third down again, although about a yard or two to gain for the Owls. They're a bit better on third down, about 43%. They're gonna go with Darby again on the run, and he's going to get it this time down around the 42 yard line and then there was some pushing and shoving after the whistle. Oh, words and actions exchanged between Javon White and Evan Garvey. Couldn't tell who was at fault there between White and Garvey. It kind of looked like they were just shoving and then they tripped over each other. It'll be interesting to see who gets penalized or maybe if the officials decide that there should be offsetting fouls here. So we already alluded to the chippiness in the early going of this contest and it's become far more obvious now. Well, let's see what we get for a call here. Fouls were actually called on two against completely different players. Well, it was number three for Fitchburg, that is Javon White, and number 18 is Nick Ng, the sophomore receiver for the Owls. I could have sworn that White was tied up with Evan Garvey. I also thought he was he was uh, wrapped with Garvey. I also thought the referee said six on Fitchburg and not three, but that wouldn't have been right either. But regardless, they do offset, but. Since they're both unsportsmanlike conduct, the referee also pointed out this is their first 
ones towards the potential disqualification that occurs if you get two of them. Darby has a much better run this time. A very solid run into Fitchburg territory. They'll move the chains. You mentioned already that both of these teams like to run the ball on the ground. They are the two best rushing offenses in the MASCAC. One thing to note, though, the Falcons have the sixth ranked rush defense in the MASCAC. Westfield State, Westfield State rather, ranks third overall in the conference. And that defensive strength may prove to be the difference in this game. It'll be a challenge for the Falcons to try to stop that great running game. Trayvon Holder's got a great run for Westfield State. Forced out of bounds around the 25 yard line. There is, however, a flag down, and this one is back at the line of scrimmage, and already a hold is indicated against the Owls. And so once again, Trayvon Holder gets a nice run that doesn't count for anything. Trayvon Holder was betrayed by a holder? Amazing. Indeed, that's how it happened. So instead of a big gain for the Owls, it's another 10-yard loss. And it was, the, uh, it was an illegal block in the back on the last possession for Westfield State but the Falcon defense has been aided by penalties from this Westfield offense. We'll see if the Owls can recover and pick up the 20 yards they need to get a first down here. So the ball's been placed at the 46 yard line on the Westfield side of the field. Two backs again in the backfield for the Owls. They'll try Holder again, puts on the spin move, gets a couple extra yards after contact. He is down at the 50 yard line. You know, Dan, the Falcons come out with their two-man backfield of Sterling Garvin and Jaquay Solomon, and really both of those guys are classified as, you know, tailbacks, halfbacks, whatever you want to call them. For the Owls, it's a more traditional setup where they have the one running back and then a fullback, David White, number 46, who lines up in the backfield as well. You see him there lining up to the right of the quarterback, Cassidy, and here he does a little bit of lead blocking there opens up the initial hole for Trayvon Holder, and it allows Holder to get four, four or five yards. On second down, Holder, he's got another good run this time. He's going to get to the Falcon 30, and there's no flag this time. That run was almost all on Trayvon Holder. There were a few little holes, but it was a great job by Holder to find them and run through them. We'll take a look at it again here. He bounces out to the right almost immediately, Good job on the end there by Ng, the wide receiver. And then Holder is into the second level, finally brought down at the Falcon 30 after a gain of about 21 yards. And now Westfield really moving the ball. Again, Holder, he's going to run out to the left side, try to find that flank. Runs very far to the left and ultimately gets about seven or eight yards. This is just a case, Dan, of Holder being faster than anybody trying to run him down. You're going to see here he's go almost going to be brought down right there by Kiambu Jones, but he's able to just run out of that tackle. And by the time he runs into the Falcons, he's got himself seven, eight, nine yards. Bring it up uh, second down and two, let's call it. Stick looks like it's around the 22-yard line. And Westfield not terribly comfortable throwing the ball. Jay Cassidy only has a 45% completion percentage on the season. So it is another run, and Holder again cuts out to the left side, taken out around the 15-yard line. That'll be good enough for an owl first. Westfield State, you mentioned, not very comfortable throwing the ball other than the first play of the game where they went play action and tried to go downfield and ultimately wound up taking, I believe, a quarterback run for a little bit of a gain. They haven't even they haven't even looked like they were running a draw. They have not hinted in the slightest that they want to throw the ball. And at least on this possession, it's worked out for them. So another first down for Westfield. And now into the red zone on their first drive. This one looks like Gar Darby with the run there. Gets another solid run for the Owls. About five games on that one to get up to around the 10 yard line. And you know, Dan, even as the Owls get closer and closer to the goal line, if they're still gaining yardage, four, five, six yards at a time, or even with bigger plays, why would you go to the air? Keep doing it until it stops working and then do it a couple more times just to make sure. 
strangely enough, one of Westfield's weaknesses has been getting it done in the red zone. They've only got a 55.6% success rate at scoring in the red zone. That's worse than the conference. On this one, it's a run again to the left side. Darby is able to get that second effort after the initial jersey grab slowed him down a little bit. But he's able to push forward, get another five yards, and one of the Falcons slow to get up there as well. This is just incredible second effort by R.J. Darby. By all rights, he should be brought down right here. There are three Falcons on top of him, but he's able to use their own momentum and plow forward just a little bit more. Gets first and goal at the five-yard line. And now Darby will head to the sidelines for a breather. Trayvon Holder checks back in. Holder looking for his 10th touchdown of the season. Spin move to the end zone, and he's got it. Touchdown, Owls. That was just fantastic blocking by the offensive line of Westfield State. Sets up Trayvon Holder one-on-one -on -one in essentially the open field. There's just a huge hole, and then there's one man to beat. Holder hits the circle button, does the spin move, and he's able to get it across the goal line for the touchdown. Corey Pooler will try to attempt the extra point. He's 11 for 14 this year, the junior from Middleborough. Kick is up, and that one is good. 2.15 to go, first quarter. Fitchburg State nil, Westfield State seven. No real surprises from Westfield State, Dan. We knew they liked to run the ball. We knew they had the best rushing offense in the MASCAC. The first possession didn't go well for them, in large part due to the block in the back penalty. The second possession goes exactly to script. They eat a ton of clock, march downfield. I think they only faced one third down on the entire drive. And they ultimately punch it in for the touchdown. Indeed, 11 plays for 71 yards, taking six minutes and 14 seconds. And the last six runs, all of which gained five yards or more. Yeah, if you do that, you're going to put points on the board. It's pretty much an inevitability at that point. And Avery Nunn kicks it off for the Owls. Taken in by Tom Aketty. He's trying to find somewhere to run with it. Doesn't really find a hole or a lane, but he's able to get the football to around the 35-yard line, and that's where the Falcons will start this drive with 2.05 to go in the first. So now, Dan, for the Fitchburg offense, it really becomes imperative. They don't even have to put points on the board, although obviously that would be nice. They just need to show something, you know, get a few first downs, get the ball into Owl territory, put a possession together, if for no other reason than to give your defense a breather give them a chance to catch their breath, get some water, and get prepared for the next possession. Don't just go three and out here and turn the ball right back over to the Owl offense. The Owls having all the momentum would be the worst thing to do there. First down, Sterling Garvin tries to run up the right side, gets about two yards and nothing more. Already Westfield looking solid in terms of the run defense. Falcons best run of the night has been just five yards. I believe that was the keeper by Brandon Brown, although I could be mistaken there. It's actually a tie. Brown's keeper and Jaquay had a run for five as well. Garvin's in the backfield again on second down. Low man in the backfield, and this time a fake throw by Brown leads to a handoff by Garvin, who gets about four or five that time, but it'll set up another third down, this time with four to go. Falcons mix it up a little bit, go with four wide receivers and only the one man in the backfield. Owl defense, however, still stands pretty strong. Third down and a long four here. I think if Fitchburg State's going to throw it all tonight, this is the time to start doing it. They'll put two in the backfield for this one. Three receivers, two to the far side. Jesse Brown, two to the near side. They're going to look to throw a dump pass to Tom Aketty. He's going to have the first down, and Tom Aketty's really running on this one. He's at the 30 and pushed out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Chris Tam Aketty takes the quick little swing pass coming out of the backfield. We'll see it again here on the replay. He's going to go off to his left side, 
then take the quick little swing pass, get a couple of blocks from his wide receivers, and that gets him into the open field for a first down and much, much, much more. Garvin will try to run through for it this time. Nearly was able to get all the way through the hole, but a good second effort by Garvin. It gets near the line to gain. Gain of nearly 10. I tell you, if it wasn't for Tyler Robbins, the, the uh, I believe is a middle linebacker for Westfield State, Garvin would have run right into the end zone untouched there. Garvin, and that is one of the best defenders they have there. A play action, and this time Garvin right through to the end zone. Touchdown, Falcons. Fitchburg State saw that they had a mismatch, went no huddle to make sure the Owls couldn't change personnel, and they marched right into the end zone. 14-yard touchdown by Sterling Garvin. This was the last play you're seeing on replay. But Garvin gets the touchdown as time expires. The Falcons an extra point away from equalizing. Bubba Lynch completed the one extra point attempt that he had last week against Framingham. Quick look at the touchdown here. It's just a quick counter run to the left side, and he goes in untouched. Acosta is the holder, and this has killed the play. Fortunate for the Falcons as that ball came closer to hitting a fan than going through the uprights. It's an illegal procedure against the Falcons, so that'll back them up five yards. Back to the last one because I mentioned the one extra point that Bubba Lynch attempted, he was successful on, and having seen it, it was the type of kick that looks like he's got plenty of leg for 20 or 25 yards. So I'll have another go at it. And it's blocked this time. James English, the junior defensive back, actually, excuse me, the senior defensive back from Lynn, graduate of Danvers High School, got in there and made the block. There was a bit of a high snap as well. I don't know if that played any part in the kick being blocked. Maybe maybe Lynch uh, hesitated, stutter stepped a little bit there. But as we head into the second quarter of action, we do so with the Falcons trailing seven to six and about to kick off to the Owls. It's not often that you get to start the second quarter with a kickoff, but that's what happens when you score as time expires. But a good run by the Falcons. Able to get the touchdown from Sterling Garvin. And obviously the big play was the third down conversion, the swing pass to Chris Tamachetti that set up the two big runs by Sterling Garvin. Falcons just needing five plays and 65 yards. Bubba Lynch just had an extra point blocked. He will now do the kicking off for Fitchburg State. Kick is away, it is high, end over end. Taken in at about the 20 yard line by Evan Garvey for Westfield State. He cuts it out to the outside and is pushed out of bounds at about the 33 yard line and two developments here. There are a couple of flags down late after the play and there is a Falcon, def Falcon uh, blocker down around the 40 yard line. Let's take a look at the return here. So Javon White wraps him up, throws him to the ground. Yeah, you can't do that. And it's Nico Johnson who's down for the Falcons there as well. Nico Johnson, the freshman linebacker from Stoneham. He's a criminal justice major. Looks like they're attending to his right knee. Penalty, I mean, less important news, is indicated against the Falcons. That'll be a 15-yard penalty that will give the Owls really good field position out at about their own 49-yard line. Looks like they're going to put it. But obviously the main focus here is the health of Nico Johnson.
real quick, Dan, why don't we go over the uh, remaining FATV football telecast schedule and give folks a chance to uh, set their calendars for the next few games that will be telecast here on FATV. Yeah, we can do that. So next week will be Friday night under the lights again, but this time back at Crawford Field. The Red Raiders will be taking on the Crusaders of Groton Dunstable, 7 o'clock start on FATV. You'll have that call with Dave Clark and Mike Flynn. And then the week after that, Saturday the 27th, it will be Senior Day here at Elliott Field. The Falcons will be hosting the Colonials of Western Connecticut State University, 2 o'clock start from here. On Friday, the November 2nd and Friday, November 9th, potential Red Raider games as well, but we don't know yet. We won't know until a couple weeks when those are going to be, who those are going to be against, just the way that the postseason system works in the MIAA. And of course, Thanksgiving looms. Yep. On November the 22nd, the Red Raiders will travel to Doyle Field to take on the Blue Devils of Lemonster in the rivalry. <laughs> 10 o'clock start from historic Doyle Field. First and 10 for the Owls at their own 49-yard line. Handoff goes to Trayvon Holder running up along the left sideline. Does a good job there, gets some excellent blocking. It's a gain of about nine yards. And, you know, just one play in, obviously, but it looks like the Owl offense is still more than happy to hand the ball off, and the Falcon defense hasn't found any answers. They keep doing it till it doesn't work anymore. And right now, the Owls' running game has been looking solid and then some. Westfield State comes out second down and one. Quarterback is Jake Cassidy. Trayvon Holder's in the backfield. Holder gets the carry. Actually gets a block from Cassidy, among others. Plunges across the 35-yard line, and he's brought down there. Stop the clock, move the chains. It's a first down Westfield State. Westfield using a different fullback there. Leo Clinton Jr., a linebacker by trade, doing some blocking there. But regardless, Trayvon Holder showing off his running skills. And he's got another first down for the Owls. And really, Dan, after the uh, late hit penalty against the Falcons, Westfield State had great field possession. Now with just one good first down, they're already at the 35-yard line. Holder gets a big hole, cuts it back up the middle. He's across the 10 to the 5, leaps, touchdown, Owls! Three plays, 51 yards, an umpire is down, and there are six points on the board for the Westfield State Owls. It's one of the final obstacles Trayvon Holder had to navigate was getting around the lineman. And, oh, he got bowled over there by Samuel Kenny. And beyond that, there wasn't much. The Falcons defense just wasn't able to catch Trayvon Holder, as you said before, an instance of he's just faster than everybody else. And he has shown off his speed yet again. Another touchdown for Trayvon Holder is 11th of the campaign. Even with 12 men on defense for Fitchburg State, they can't bring him down. Fortunately, the umpire is up, and he's all right. You know, he's tough. He's a football umpire. Always one of the challenges of being an umpire is that you're right in the thick of the action all the time. Corey Pooler on to attempt the extra point for Westfield State out of a hold from Michael Veccarelli. Good snap, good hold. Kick is not very pretty, but it is very good. Kind of a sideways frisbeeing kick, but it gets through the uprights. It's worth one point. No style points here. Nobody really cares how it goes through the uprights. All that matters is that it goes through the uprights. 13.33 to go, second quarter. Fitchburg State 6, Westfield State 14. So, Dan, we talked about how the Falcon offense needed to answer Westfield State's score, and they were able to do that. Unfortunately, the defense just had no answers for the Owl rushing game. And the Owl's rushing game on that drive was give the ball to Trayvon Holder. It worked. Yep. They did it three times. He got nine yards, he got seven yards, he got 35 yards, he got six points. That'll work. I think they will take that every time. And now Holder up to 98 yards on the night, and we have a lot of football to play. 98 yards, and we're only, we're not even a minute and a half into the second quarter. Could be a very long night for the Falcon defense if they can't contain Trayvon Holder. Pooler kicks it away for the Owls. Taken in by Tamaketti at about the 15-yard line. Really not much there for him. Does a good job to get as much of it as, as he can. 
They'll mark him down at about the 35 yard line where the Falcon offense will come back out. So about a 15 yard run, 20 yard run back. Falcons can take that and start from basically the same spot they started their last drive from. A thought that just came to my head while I was doing research. Their first game of the season, Westfield State, they played Nichols, they won 25-14. And Nichols wasn't able to get into the red zone in that game because both of their scores were on kickoff returns. So it is a vulnerability for the Owls, which the Falcons have been unable to exploit thus far. First and 10 on their own 35-yard line. Sterling Garvin gets the carry. Runs to his left side, picks up about three yards. Worth, rest, worth mentioning, rather, Chris Tamaketti is in the backfield now for Fitchfield, Fitchburg State. Uh, Jaquay Solomon is on the sideline. We'll keep an eye on that. Falcons do have three legitimate running backs they can go to in Garvin, Tamaketti, and Solomon. So that helps to have a bit of the depth there. And, of course, it's not to mention the... Uh, running potential shown by their own quarterback, Brandon Brown. We'll probably see more of that as the night goes on. Second down handoff. Ball is loose. I believe it has fallen on by the Owls. It is Westfield State with the recovery. Andrew Carpenter, the senior linebacker from Auburn, falls on that one. And so, as you can see on the replay, Dejon Cummings knew what the play was from the moment he burst straight through the line. And just as Brown was able to take the ball out to do the play action, Cummings just came right in, blasted Brown. He loses the football, and the Owls are able to recover. And now a huge, well, it's not really a huge swing of momentum because they had the momentum, but now any momentum that Fitchburg had has now gone solely onto the side of the Owls. They're in great field position. First and 10, Owls at the Falcon 29-yard line. Play action, they want the dagger. Throw to the end zone is high and incomplete. Was intended for Nick Ng. He was triple covered. Owls are probably fortunate that that pass was as inaccurate as it was. I think if it was on target, the Falcons would have come down with it. It was actually pretty badly overthrown, ultimately. Cassidy had plenty of time to throw, too. Just kind of airmailed his receiver, so now second down and 10. That was the first attempt of the game for the Owls through the air. Handoff goes to R.J. Darby, takes it to the left side, marked down at the 25-yard line after a gain of four. I would think, Dan, that this is four down territory for Westfield State because they wouldn't really have the excellent kicking game. You're obviously not going to punt from the 25-yard line. Plus, there's just the sheer fact that the Falcons have shown no real inclination towards stopping. Pullers long this year is 30 yards, and it'd be 42 from here. Third down and seven. Now the handoff goes to Darby, and he is plowed down at about the 25-yard line. So as you said, it would be a 42-yard field goal for a kicker whose season long is 30. Probably not something you're going to do. But it is fourth and about six. So I don't think West, I think Westfield State would probably call a pass. It might be worth trying to do a pass. And after all, you only need to get about six yards for the first down. Owls come out, three receivers, two men in the backfield. R.J. Darby is the tailback, and whistles kill the play. Timeout, Westfield State. First timeout of the game. It's the first of the half for the Owls. They have two remaining. That's why we have a moment. Uh, there are other games in Division Three football tonight. Last year, when we got the night game, we were the only game in town. But there are three other games tonight. I mean, we're the only game in, in this town and in many towns that are close to here because I don't think any of these games are in New England even. None of them are, actually. But the other three games in Division Three football tonight, Mary Harden Baylor, number two in the nation, is taking on in-state rival Howard Payne. They're both out of Texas. Farum, out of Virginia, will be taking on Guilford, out of North Carolina. And Wilkes, out of Pennsylvania, will be taking on FDU Florham, out of New Jersey. Those are all games that are going on as we speak in Division Three football. All right, Dan, I have a question for you. Yep. Where on God's green earth is Florham, New Jersey? I do not know, but Florham 
is FDU Florham is actually a satellite campus of Fairleigh Dickinson University. That's what the FDU stands for. Okay. And it just so happens that one has a football program as well. Fourth down and six. Westfield goes play action going for the end zone. Pass is long, but it is brought in. Touchdown, Owls. Evan Garvey went full extension on the reach for that one, but he was able to bring in the pass from Jake Cassidy. Westfield State now has a 14-point lead less than five minutes into the second quarter of action. Garvey may only be five feet seven inches tall, but he was able to use his reach and reach out and get that football and pull it in for the six. And that's one of the challenges the Falcons have had this year. It always seems like on these long passes, there's just, well, that's the block right there. Falcons trying to run this one back. Dan, how many kicks have the Falcons blocked this year? I believe that's the fifth one. I know I asked you this during our last telecast. What's the record? It's they, some, they've got to be close. Well, I think I'd done, I'd done some research a few weeks ago and had come to the conclusion that this would be the, well, if you have five blocked kicks, you're going to have five chances to run it back for two. And I think the record for most chances at the end zone to run back for two in a season was three. So, so they should already have a record for that at the very least. So for as much of a challenge as the season has been, let it be known, all you Falcons fans, there is no team better at blocking extra point attempts than this team, as far as we know at the Division Three level. That's probably the saddest thing you could be the best at because it means you've had the most opportunities, but still, they have something. Something to hang your hat on, at the very least. <laughs> So as it is, because of the failed extra point, it is only a 14-point lead, 20-6 to six now for Westfield State. Their kickoff is away, taken in at about the 15 once again by Tamaketti. And it's almost a mirror image of the last kick. Not quite as good a return. He's finally dragged down by George Cole. Robbie Nelson in there as well. It was going to be a mirror image up until the moment they wrapped him up at the 30 and wouldn't let him get any farther. Really nothing doing there. You know, the initial blocking is solid, but nothing in terms of a wedge or nothing opening for Tamaketti to run through. He just takes it up until he hits somebody and is then brought down. Falcon offense comes back out. There was a penalty against Fitchburg as well. It's a chop block, I believe, is that signal? Block below the waist is the call. So it brings Fitchburg State back all the way to their own 15-yard line. Now an offense that gave the ball away on their last possession needs 85 yards for a touchdown. They'll come out with four wide receivers and only Garvin in the backfield. Quick pass to the near side is complete to Herbert Acosta. He ducks out of one tackle and is brought down near the 20 yard line. It's a gain of about seven for the captain Acosta. We've already seen the Falcons successful with a quick throw to the side. This time it's Acosta who takes that one in. Gets his way around a couple of would be tacklers and is able to get about six on that one. Second down and five now for Fitchburg State. Jaquay Solomon checks back in as a second man in the backfield. Sterling Garvin gets the carry. He's got a first down. Not much more than that. Finally brought down by Omel Bonilla. But it is enough to stop the clock and move the chains. First down, Falcons. Every little bit you can get counts. Garvin able to find the hole. And as you mentioned, Bonilla able to wrap his hands around and take him down. If he's not able to make that play, been big yards for Garvin. Falcons come out with four receivers. One of them you saw there, Jaquay Solomon, lined up in the far slot. Brown rolls to his right, hands off to Garvin, coming back to the left. Looked like it had the potential to be a big gain. Brandon Rivera made a potentially touchdown saving tackle. Still a gain of about six. Here it is again, Dan. Very deep handoff there. And Garvin, just unfortunately, I mean, bursting in with a lot of speed was Rivera. We saw Fitchburg State run that play a couple of times in the last game we telecast. You know, roll the quarterback to the right, then hand it off. 
going back to the left. It was always successful for them, and it did gain six yards there. Now on second down and four, the run straight up the middle by Garvin is stuffed basically right at the line of scrimmage. They'll bring up third down and four. We'll see what the Falcons can do on third down. This time trying to go with a more conventional handoff, and there was just nothing there. Tyler Robbins had the tackle, and he already looked like he was on the ground when he made the tie up there. <laughs> That's fighting in the trenches, all right. And Robbins leads the team of tackles coming to today, 45 of them from six games. So now third and call it a long three for Fitchburg State. Handoff goes to Solomon running to the right. He's brought down after a gain of two. It'll be shy of the first down. Andrew Carpenter, the man who recovered the fumble on the last drive, was there to make the tackle. And now it is fourth and one, and you're one and five, and you're losing by two touchdowns. Why are you punting? Because you're going to hope that their returner muffs it. Okay. That's just using the experience we gained two weeks ago. Sure. When you asked that question. When I asked the same question and they muffed the punt, that's fair. <laughs> nice booming one. It's a very good punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 26-yard line by number 26, Colin DeBarber. So Westfield State's offense will take over. Been really impressed by the kicking and punting of Bubba Lynch, pressed into duty thanks to the injuries to Kyrie Watford and Bryce Santos. Again, we didn't know he had kicking duties in him coming into the season, but sometimes adversity will bite you in the rear end, and sometimes you just have to dig down the depth chart, see what you can get, and sometimes you get something decent out of it. Bubba Lynch has been more than that. He has stood out. Now first and 10 for the Owls. Trayvon Holder gets the carry. He's across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Tackle made by Kenny Richards of the Falcons. They end up giving him four for the run, which might be one of the shortest runs he's had in a while, which doesn't sound very good when it you say it. No, no, that doesn't bode well. Second down and six, play action fake. Cassidy keeps it himself. He's got a first down. He's tripped up to stop what might have been a big gain. But still, that's the first real trickery we've seen from Westfield State since the first play of the game where they went play action and tried to hit the home run. Cassidy keeps it himself, and you see there, Kenny Richards was coming, and he bit hard on that play fake. Opened up the field, gave the Owls a first down. Now they do it again. Cassidy keeps off play action, rolls to the left, breaks out of one tackle, ducks out of bounds. He's just shy of the line to gain. It's about a nine-yard run for Kent, Jake Cassidy, rather, the junior quarterback from Lynn. Coming into today, Cassidy had 66 carries from six games. It's 11 carries a game. And that's quite a lot for a quarterback. And we, I think, I don't know if we've mentioned it yet, but Cassidy is a fairly mobile quarterback. Him and Brandon Brown sort of match up pretty similarly. A lot of similarities in their games. Now second down and one for the Owls. They send Leo Clinton Jr. in motion. Bit of a miscommunication there. Cassidy ran into the running back holder. Ultimately, Cassidy's brought down after what will be marked a loss of about three. See if we can figure out what happened here, Dan. Part of that may have been just not in a good position to make the transfer. And do you want to be reaching up towards your shoulders to grab a football? No, not especially. It looked as though Cassidy thought they were setting up like a quick screen pass to the near side, and Holder was expecting a handoff. In any case, they were not on the same page, and it killed the play for Westfield. They lose a couple of yards. They'll have to gain four to get the first on third down. Ball spotted right at midfield. Owls need the 46 of the Falcons. Cassidy rolls to his left. It's a designed quarterback run, and it's not going to get the first down. Excellent defense there by Javon White, the senior defensive captain for the Falcons. They got the playoff just as the play clock hit zero. And the Falcons able to just stop Cassidy. He's not able to get the line to gain. Now, 
West now, Westfield is 50% on fourth downs this season. See there, Jason, sorry, excuse me, that's the wrong roster. Caleb Gonsalves, one of the defensive standouts for the Falcons heading to the sideline. Fourth and one, Westfield State will go for it. I like the play call. They send Holder and Clinton out. Only Cassidy in the backfield. It's a pooch punt. Ball bounces at the 25 and takes an owl bounce. And it will be downed at the Falcon 20. And I have a question for you, Dan Bolek. Yes. Let it not be said that I am an unfair man. Mm -hmm. It is fourth and one at your opponent's 46-yard line. You're leading by 14 points. You have a chance to march in for a touchdown that would put this game away before halftime. Why are you punting? Because they just want to pin the Falcons back and try to snuff their momentum out. They have no momentum. Cassidy's a decent punter, too. Averages 37 yards a kick. That average just went down. They only got like 20. They did, but they did pin Fitchburg in a little bit. Well, it's at the 20. OK, maybe not. I don't know. Falcons take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Jaquay Solomon and Chris Tamaketti in the backfield. Tamaketti gets the carry. Dives across the line of scrimmage. Not much more than that. Brought down by Tyler Robbins. Feels like Robbins is going to be a name we're going to be calling a lot tonight. And it looked like Tamaketti just wasn't able to run parallel to the yard markers as quickly as the Owl defense was able to, so he wasn't really able to get around to the flank and find any open daylight. Now on second down, play action fake, pass to the near, near side rather is complete. Herbert Acosta with the catch, and then he is shoved backward by four men who are much larger than he is. This is the third catch for Acosta tonight, and the second time that the play ended because he stopped getting progress as opposed to being taken down to the ground. He doesn't go down easily. I think we'll give Andrew Carpenter the official credit for the tackle there. Sets up third down and about two for Fitchburg State. Solomon gets the carry. Excuse me, that's Tamaketti. Really nothing doing there. I think Zach Kane is going to get credit for the tackle. We'll have a look at it again. Going to the right side, and there was never anything there. Yeah, that right there, that's got to be Kane making the hit for Westfield State. Falcon offense goes three and out. They will kick it away to the Owls with less than three minutes to play here in the first half. Westfield State does have two timeouts, and they will get the ball as well to start the third quarter. Owls with a chance to really put this game away. Play clock was down to one second. The Falcons weren't ready to snap it. So the Falcons take their first timeout. They'll snap the ball with 3.02 to play. And of course, remember there has been trouble with the long snapping. You know, injuries have pressed a few men further up the depth field. Connor Fitzsimons, the backup quarterback, has been doing the long snapping. We saw him bounce the first one, although the last few have been solid. Speaking of solid, that is excellent form on, I'm sure there's a technical term for that, and I just don't know what it is. I'm ignorant of cheerleading, and I apologize. Just to make anyone feel better, if this makes you feel like they'll feel better, Mary Harden Baylor is up 41-0 on Howard Payne at halftime. It could be worse. That is the silver lining I am trying to extract from this. It could always be worse. Good snap on the punt. It's a good high end over end kick. Fair catch called for and made at the 36 yard line. So for Westfield State, they have 254, two timeouts. They need to go about 64 yards to make this a three touchdown lead. And on that last possession, Dan, we saw Westfield State reach a little bit deeper into their playbook. You know, they did, you know, a few play actions. Jake Cassidy took it and ran with it a few times on his own. And the Owls are varying their play calls here. First down handoff goes to RJ Darby running to the left, right rather. Darby breaks out of one tackle, can't break out of the next one. Winds up being no gain. 
A lot of effort put in there by Darby. Just trying to break off a hit from Keambu Jones. He does do so, but Javon White gets in there. Malik Crowford latches on behind. Falcons are lucky not to be called for a face mask. There's not a whole lot there for Westfield. No gain. Owls are uh, not exactly rushing up to the line. They may well just be content to run off as much clock as they can. They face second down and 10 at their own 37. Darby gets the carry, tries the left side this time. Has a little bit more success. Mark him down at about the 45 yard line. Bring up third down and call it three. Second efforts have been pretty good for Westfield in this contest. Bubba Lynch tries to wrap him up and eventually does so. But they needed a bit of help from Devontae Hart coming in afterwards. It's eight yards gained for Westfield, another third down. Westfield State going under center for one of the first times tonight. Hand off straight to the right side. Darby was tripped as he came up the backfield. He's very close to the line to gain. I think the head linesman is saying move the chains, but the head linesman is a good yard up the field from where the ball was spotted. Everyone else had it a yard short, and it looks very much like it's a yard short. Samuel Kenny did a really good job for the Falcons to make the trip in the backfield. Now Fitchburg State, having gotten the Owls to fourth down, will take time out. It's their second of the half, so they will get the ball back. Ball will be snapped with 84 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. And the Falcon offense will have probably a, a minute and change and one timeout. Chance to put something on the board. There was one other Fitchburg State sports team in action tonight. Women's soccer was down to North Adams. It's a long drive. Yep. All the way down Route 2, about 100 miles. And they were able to find victory in North Adams. They defeated the MCLA Trailblazers by a score of one to nothing. I mean, it's a nice drive. You know, you take out, you take Route 2, you go out past Orange, it, kind of stops being a highway and turns into a road. And then there's Irving, I hate Irving actually. But you know, Florida's nice. Yep. Got that big hill, the hairpin turn. Yep, North Adams going into Clarksburg. My sister went to MCLA, I've made that drive a number of times. And when can you ever say you can that Florida is just an hour and a half away? That's right. It's either a very fast plane or a nice drive up route two. Now on fourth down, Westfield State will kick it away. I suppose I should point out that it's fourth and one and they should be going for it, but they're not. So consider that pointed out. Kick is away, it's low. Bounces at the 25 and picked up there. Steven Lawton made the return for the Falcons. Juan, freshman receiver from Ayer, went to Ayer Shirley. And he read it on the bounce, wanted to try to get some yards out of it. And didn't want to take any chances there as he was sort of stumbling to the ground as well. So Fitchburg State will have it first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. 114 to go in the second quarter. Feel like this would be a great time to try some passing plays. I mean, if you're going to do it, now's the time. Quick, pa quick pass to the near side is complete. Jesse Brown makes the catch. Falcons are hurrying back to the line. A few yards gained on that one. Gain of about four, call it second down and six now. Less than a minute to play. Brown back to pass on second down. Pumps, he's under pressure. He's going to keep it himself. Cuts up the middle, ducks out of one tackle, sheds another. He's across the 40. Ball is loose, and the Owls have fallen on it. Now Just it's... when it looks like the Falcon offense is putting something together, Westfield State strips the ball and falls on it. I'm sorry, Dan, I stepped on your words there. Yep. It was looking so good for Brandon Brown. How many tackles did he get out of on this one? And then somehow the ball pops loose. Well, there's one. There's another. There's three. Then he gets out of that guy. There's four, and right there, the ball pops up. 
It's Caleb Parker who stripped the ball, and then I believe it was Zach Howard who fell on it. It's the second turnover of the night for Brandon Brown, and now Westfield State takes over. They've got two timeouts and 42 seconds, and they only need 42 yards. Cassidy back to pass on first down. Pass to the left side is complete. Evan Garvey the reception. Fitchburg State with a basically a prevent defense. They're more than happy to let Westfield State pick up seven, eight, nine yards at a clip. Does get the first down after the catch. See their Falcons playing very loose coverage and just content to wrap up the ball carrier in the open field. Back to live action now. Cassidy rolls to his right, throws to his right, passes underthrown and incomplete, but there's a flag. I think Jared Citizen might actually be victimized by just how poorly that ball was thrown. He was unprepared for the receiver adjusting to the ball in the air. And I think they're going to get him for either pass interference or illegal contact. And it is pass interference, which will be a 15-yard penalty. Anything the Falcons are forcing the Owls to throw the football. I'll say he wrapped a, he wrapped up Ig and wasn't going for the football. He's going to try to take Ig down before he could really make a play on it. So they'll award Westfield 15 yards for that. That play was pretty slow to develop. There's only 15 seconds left. Westfield State has two timeouts, but they really only have time to run one or two plays. First down, Cassidy rolls to his left, throws to his left, pass is complete. Tackle is made, stop the clock. Owls take timeout with six seconds left. Trayvon Holder made the catch. And Dan, I'm a little nervous just to be next to the glass separating the press box from the Falcon coaching box because they're starting to slam things and throw things around in there. The defensive coordinators are quite cross right now with, I mean, they're letting Jake Cassidy throw the football and he's not missing his targets right now. He is not playing to the script as his passing abilities is, would imply. It's been a good job by Cassidy. It hasn't looked terribly pretty, and he was aided by the pass interference penalty. But, you know, that'll all come out in the wash. What matters right now is he was given the ball with 42 seconds. He's used 36 of those seconds, and Westfield State has it first and goal at the two. They could conceivably hand it off here and either get into the end zone or have the play end very quickly and call their last time out. I think that's what I would do. I think you can get a play, a running play off in about five seconds, get the timeout off, and give yourself another shot if you don't get into the end zone. And that is what they will do. Trayvon Holder up the middle. He is tackled immediately, and every owl makes a tee with their hands. <laughs> Timeout called by Westfield State with two seconds left. Credit where credit is due. Stone Cold Richard Austin made the tackle for Fitchburg State. Able to make the stuff there, especially when the very powerful Trayvon Holder only needed two yards. And the Falcons were able to prevent him from getting the two yards. And now two seconds left. This will, barring a defensive foul, be the last play of the first half. Westfield State has their entire playbook at their disposal. Now the question is, what do you do here? Five twos on the scoreboard, basically. Second down and two. Ball at the two with two seconds left in quarter two. It's a handoff to number five, and number five has six points. Touchdown, Owls. Trayvon Holder gets the score. Third touchdown of the night for Trayvon Holder. He gets out of the tackle by Kenny, and then Javon White tries to pull him down in such a way that the ball wouldn't be across the line, but the ball was across the line. And Westfield with a 20-plus point lead going to halftime unless something catastrophic happens. Which we've already had a blocked extra point tonight, so. We have. We have. Corey Pooler will attempt the kick. 
Good snap, good hold. This kick is away and it is good. So Dan, we will go to the locker rooms with Westfield State up by three touchdowns, 27 to six. Is there any silver lining for Fitchburg State right now? Well, the one drive that they scored was a very nice performance for the Falcons, but ultimately the turnovers have really been biting them. The two fumbles by Brandon Brown, and it's just been a bit of rough luck. You know, the first fumble was one of the defenders reading the play perfectly, and then the second fumble was Brown just trying to make something, trying to play a little bit of, you know, try to start some momentum, try to seize whatever they could back, and then the ball just pops out after Brown had eluded no fewer than five tackles. Yeah, that second fumble was especially heartbreaking. You know, Fitchburg State was given the ball. They had, uh, you know, about a minute and 15 seconds left. Kind of a busted play. It was intended to be a pass downfield. Brown was able to make something happen, pick up the first down and more. He was near to midfield and then just couldn't maintain the handle on the ball. It ultimately popped loose. And unfortunately for the Falcons, Westfield State fell on it. And then they were able to engineer an incredible drive going downfield 42 yards in 42 seconds to get the touchdown to go up by 21 points as they head into halftime. And looking at the passing numbers in this first half, both quarterbacks coming into tonight's contest with less than a 50% completion percentage. Jake Cassidy, 45% on the season. Brandon Brown, 47.5%. Cassidy's 3 of 4 for 50 yards and a touchdown. Brandon Brown is 5 of 6 for 56 yards. But of course, the big story, Trayvon Holder, 12 carries, 104 yards, and he's found Pater three times. Second consecutive week, he's run for three touchdowns. And that is just in the first half of this one. There's still the entire second half. And hey, there's the entire second half for Fitchburg to engineer a remarkable comeback as well. We will see what the future holds, but right now the present holds Amanda Agassi and Fitchburg State alumnus Malcolm Brown Simpson. Let's send it down to Amanda for a special halftime interview. Go, Amanda. Hi everyone, and as promised, back here at halftime, I'm joined by a former alumni captain, Malcolm Brown Simpson. Thank you so much for joining us on the sideline. Nice to have you. Thank you, I appreciate it. So, you know, we just got to dive right into it. What has life been like after football? What have you been up to? I'm sure a lot of people are curious. Work. Um, just work. It's pretty boring, honestly. No, no real hobbies besides working. Uh, try to go out when I can, but other than that, just work, try to do what I can. Okay, okay, so safe to say you miss football. Yeah, definitely, big time. So, speaking on that, there are former players that are now coaching that you were playing with when you were here at Fitchburg. Um, just seeing that, I'm sure that speaks volumes to you about seeing some teammates coach the team now. Um, any words of advice that you would give to those coaches? Uh, not many, honestly. Uh, I think they're doing a good job for what they have. Um, it's definitely probably a new stepping stone for a lot of them. Um, I know for one, I wouldn't be able to, you know, just turn around from playing to coaching, but I commend them for the job they're doing. A uh, young team, um, but, you know, with the demeanor that they have, their past history of success, I'm, I'm not afraid that, you know, the re end result of what they'll have with coaching. Now, last week they faced Framingham at Framingham, lost 26 to 7. Um, you know, that just, I think you can see that the defense clearly has improved, that they're able to hold a premium only to 26 points. I remember back when you played your senior year, you guys were able to hold them to 14 points. So can you just kind of talk to me about that experience overall, just playing against Framingham State, you know, our rival school, and it's definitely always a big game. Um, it is. Um, it always has been for whatever reason or so, but um, defense itself speaks a lot. Uh, them hold them to that, you know, definitely can commend them to that. Um, on the other end of the board, you know, um, just framing him himself. They've been previously known for, you know, continuing to control the mascot in football. Um, so, you know, they're doing a good job with what they have um, and making a little bit of stride of success of so actually closing on it and actually beating them. So now I have to ask, what would you say the defense needs to work on playing Westfield Think back to playing Westfield when you were on the field. Any key words of advice at all, pointers at all, that we should know that the defense should focus on? Uh, I would say keep, uh, I'd have DNs probably keep outside containment. 
force everything back inside to the linebackers and safety. That's where the most uh, the rest of their help is, um, risk is speaking. Um, they're running around a lot, I see, but like I said, just a little minor adjustments around keeping edge containment. They'll be able to then actually um, do their job, get nice three and outs and get the offensive ball. Okay, there you have it. Joined by Malcolm Brown Simpson, former Falcon. Thank you so much for joining me on the sideline. Back up to you guys. Friday night football here from Elliott Field, Fitchburg State trailing Westfield State by a score of 27 to 6. I'm John Gugarty, joined as always by Dan Bolak and Amanda Agassi. We want to thank Amanda for her halftime interview with Falcon alumnus Malcolm Brown Simpson. Always good to see some old favorites coming back to Elliott Field. Dan, as we take a look at this one, it has been well, you know, sometimes there are scores where you say the score doesn't really reflect the game. I would say 27-6 to 6 pretty well reflects this first half of action. Ultimately, Westfield outgaining Fitchburg 234 to 117. Westfield, we mentioned, has the best running game in the conference coming into tonight. And they have 184 yards on the ground in one half of play. More than half coming from Trayvon Holder, their senior running back. 12 carries, 104 yards, and three touchdowns. Three touchdowns, three touchdowns for Trayvon Holder. Trayvon Holder, a senior out of Hartford, Connecticut. That was what you were looking for on the stat sheets there. But nonetheless, Holder coming into tonight, just to tell you how good a player he was, you know, he leads the conference in rushing touchdowns. With, he had nine coming into tonight. He was tied for ninth nationally in rushing touchdowns with nine different players as well. So a lot and, uh, of nines I don't, for number five. I don't think all of those nine players have three rushing touchdowns tonight because there aren't even nine other games tonight. Yep. And we did, and we looked at the scoreboard, the out-of-town scoreboard. This is the second closest game. Well, you know, that's something. Yep. <laughs> yep. Wilkes beating FDU Florham 31-7. Guilford up on Farrell 21-13. That's the closest. And then the most recent update out of Howard Payne, it's still halftime there apparently, and it's still 41 nothing. Mary Hart and Baylor. Well, you know. It's like, if you're a one in four Howard Payne team taking on the number two team in the nation, it's gonna be rough. Hey, it's not great. It's not what you want. But uh, refocusing our attention here at the game at Elliott Field, obviously Trayvon Holder, as you mentioned, the three touchdowns. The other big story is the turnovers. Both of these teams have a little bit of trouble with that coming into the game thus far. Westfield State has had a fumble. They muffed the opening kickoff, but they were able to fall on that one. Fitchburg State has had two fumbles and lost both of them. Yep, and both of them is Brandon Brown losing a handle on the first one, trying to hand it off to Sterling Garvin, but one of the Westfield defenders in Dejon Cummings just reading the play perfectly and forcing the fumble. On the other end, Brandon Brown trying to make something out of less than nothing and was making a pretty spectacular effort when the ball was poked out of his grasp after gaining 10 yards on a play. He loses the football, Westfield's able to recover, and on both of those his fumbles, Westfield was able to go and score with the limited field. And that, that second fumble proved especially costly. It took the Falcons from being down 20-6 to six and driving with a chance to go into halftime down just one score now they find themselves, after Westfield State was able to turn that possession into points, they are down 27-6 to and kicking it off. Westfield State won the opening coin toss and deferred to the second half. So we are underway here in the third quarter. Kickoff from Bubba Lynch is away. Westfield State goes with a little trickery. Trayvon Holder gets the handoff on the return. Holder's across the 35-40. Holder to midfield. He's got a couple more blocks, 20, 35, 30 rather. Still to the 20-yard line, 15, 10, and finally dragged out of bounds. What can't Trayvon Holder do? It's hard to find words to describe how you should be feeling after seeing that. I know Westfield, exuberant, elated, Fitchburg, expletive, 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 expletive. <laughs> Holder takes the handoff from Evan Garvey. It looks like he's going to be dragged down at his own 28-yard line, and then he finds a hole, gets a bunch of blocks, and now he's in the open field. He has that great downfield vision, and now he's just dragging tacklers with him, finally forced out of bounds at the 8-yard line by Keanu Rodriguez, probably the seventh Falcon to touch him on that play. 
first and goal for the Owls. R.J. Darby gets the carry. And he plows through to about the five yard line. Tackle made by Kenny Richards. Did someone tell Trayvon Holder to turn off the cheat codes. It's not fair. <laughs> by the way, if you wanted to know how good he is at uh, kickoff returns, that would be his first of the season. Does that even count as a, as a return? He took a handoff. I don't even know. Stat keeping is weird. Although I will say, if you have Trayvon Holder in your D3 Fantasy League, you are in a very deep D3 Fantasy League and need to reevaluate your position in many things. Second down and goal for the Owls from the Falcon five yard line. Quick pitch to the left, RJ Darby the carry, cuts it up field, spins, he's near the goal line. We await the official signal. The Owls think they have a touchdown. The officials disagree. They're gonna spot, spot that ball just shy of the goal line. And I do mean just shy of the goal line. Look at that. Parallax effect might be in effect there, but it looked like it was just hovering over it, didn't it? He was as close as you could get without really getting it. I think that's actually the correct call. Now third and goal. Play action fake, Cassidy just dives forward. That's not fancy, but it is effective. Jake Cassidy with the, uh, let's call it a two inch touchdown carry. Westfield State now leads 33 to six. Fourth touchdown of the season for Jake Cassidy might be the shortest touchdown run of the season or career or life. Or like ever. <laughs> There wasn't much more you really needed to do there. Corey Pooler on to attempt the extra point. Kick is away, it is up, and it is good. So 13-10 to play here in the third quarter, and Westfield State is on top 34-6. To and with the way that football works, Westfield has now scored on two consecutive possessions, as in two. They get the ball, then they get the ball back, and then they, they get scored the both times. And now the Falcons will have their first possession since that back-breaking fumble. And already for you know the last time Fitchburg State's offense had the ball, it was 20 to six, and the game was within reach, although one-sided. And now just two and a half minutes of game time, but two touchdowns later you're looking at a 34 to six deficit and you're just saying, all right, let's try to get something, anything positive as we look forward to the Falcons going into their bye week and then senior day will be their next contest, October the 27th against the undefeated Western Connecticut State. The Colonials five and zero, a surprisingly good team this season. Probably gonna be six and zero. they're getting Maritime next week. They're getting Maritime this week. And that kills the play as he goes down. Tamaketti made the catch and landed on his knee. So the ball is dead right there. Everything and anything that can go wrong for Fitchburg State is going wrong. Offense will now be pinned back deep in their own territory. First and 10 at the 10. That's one of those things about college football, unlike the NFL, where if you go down like that, you can get back up and run. You can't do that in college. Once you're down, you're down. So first and 10 at the 10 for Fitchburg State. Brandon Brown, the quarterback. He has Sterling Garvin and Jaquay Solomon in the backfield with him. It is Solomon, the ball carrier this time. Runs to the right side, not much there. Cuts it back up the middle, gets a yard or two. It'll be second down and eight now for Fitchburg State. Run defense has been solid for Westfield tonight, and we mentioned that coming into the contest. They only give out about 103 yards a game on the ground. And tonight, trying to find how many they've given up, but I can't find it quickly enough to make that happen in good time, can Fitchburg I? Fitchburg State with just 61 yards on the ground in the first half. And they got a couple more there. It'll be second down and eight for Fitchburg State. Handoff goes to Sterling Garvin, and this time Garvin is wrapped up after a loss or maybe a short gain. Zach Howard, the, care, the tackle rather, 
It is, in fact, a loss of a yard on that one. As Garvin tries to go to around the same place, tries to find some opening on the right side, but again, there's nothing there. Westfield's done very well matching their defenders tit for tat with the Falcon running backs, and they haven't been able to really find those holes. Third down and eight for Fitchburg. Three receivers, two backs. It's Garvin and Solomon in the backfield. Brown straight drop, looking left, throwing left. Pass is caught on the near side. Paul Osayand the catch. Excuse me, that's Osayand, freshman receiver from Boston. That's his first career catch. So his first catch of his Falcon career is good for a first down. Sets Fitchburg State up first and 10 now at their own 26 yard line. Handoff goes up the middle, Sterling Garvin the carry. He gets a few. It's across the 30 to the 31 yard line, call it a gain of about four yards. Try to go back to the run there, get a few yards up there. I know on that last play, the throw to Osand, he looked like he was pretty much wide open. He got himself in a good spot. Brown was willing to make a throw towards him, and he was able to pull it in. Second down and six, Brown straight drop, throws long to the left, looking for Jesse Brown. He's got Jesse Brown. Catch made in Owl territory, and the Brown to Brown connection strikes big for the first time tonight. First down, Fitchburg State at the Westfield 46. And I think with the, Falcon, with the Falcons down 28 points, it's going to be worth trying a few more of these long pass plays, I think. Try to be a little more ambitious. What have you got to lose? First and 10 Falcons at the Westfield State 46 yard line. Sterling Garvin, the ball carrier, breaks through the line of scrimmage into the second level. Brought down after a gain of about five yards. Zach Kane with the, with the tackle. That'll be something to watch if the Falcons can try to wear down the Falcons. I mean, the Falcons try to wear down the Owls' run defense. Four receivers on second down. And Brown looking the quick throw to the right side. He's going to run with it. And now he'll throw downfield. That's Acosta reaching out and pulling that one in. It's one of the most impressive catches we've seen all night for the Fitchburg State offense. Herbert Acosta going full extension to bring this one in. Take a look at the replay, Dan. See, so squares up. It's about trying to run for it. Doesn't like his options there. So he goes with the run. He goes with the pass. And he's able to just get, get to Acosta in stride as he's diving to the ground. Acosta had to reach out as far as his arms would allow, but he was able to bring it in. Sets the Falcons up first and 10 at the Westfield State 20 yard line. And Westfield called timeout there. 9.59 to go in the third quarter. The Owls leading by 28 points. Well, I will say, Dan, the only scoring drive Fitchburg State had, they were able to move the ball with the no-huddle approach. They found a mismatch on defense, and they exploited it. So perhaps Westfield State being a little cautious to avoid that here, they take their first timeout of the second half. So it'll be first and 10 for the Falcons. Couple receivers to the left side. Brown thinking pump faking. Now he's going to throw towards the end zone. And that one's going to be incomplete. Double coverage there on the far side as he was looking for Jesse Brown. Trying to make the Brown to Brown connection for six. Really good defense there. James English on the coverage for Westfield State. Take a look at the replay here. It's just a little pump and go. Brown has his eyes locked on Jesse Brown. He never had any deceptive looks at all. English was able to get a hand up, swat the ball away. Now on second down, it's a run straight up the middle, bursting through the line and into the end zone. Touchdown, Sterling Garvin. Just like his first touchdown run, he was able to find a hole, burst through it, and he could not be stopped until there was no more field to cover. Garvin's second touchdown carry of the day. Falcons clinging to life in this one, down now 22 points, but with more than a quarter and a half to play. We'll have another look at the score here. 
It's just a simple run up the middle. He gets some good blocking, and once he's into the second level, nobody can bring him down. Now the extra point is up, and it is good. Bubba Lynch kicks it through, his first extra point of the night. And now it's a 21-point game, 34-13. to 13. Westfield State still on top. Also, you can see a high five exchanged between Bubba Lynch and the injured kicker, Bryce Santos. There's Jim McGuire, just had the interim tag taken off a couple weeks ago after the win against Maritime. He was originally named interim head coach after Pat Haverty stepped down in February. But they finally took the interim tag off a couple weeks ago, happy with the direction the program is going in. Well, they won. Yeah, they won. They're one in five, but it is a rebuilding year, more or less. Oh, absolutely. You know, Fitchburg State, you know, we've mentioned it a few times. It is not much of a surprise that they have struggled this year. They were projected to be the recipients of the wooden spoon in the MASCAC. And it is, as we've said, a young team, a, t a turnover team. You know, some struggles are to be expected. Lynch's kick is away. Taken in by Garvey at about the 10 yard line. Takes it up along the far sideline. Really good return by him. He is finally brought down at about the 40 yard line for Westfield State. And now, Dan, it is on the defense for Fitchburg State to answer the statement made by their offense, find a way to stop these Owls. That's been quite a challenge. Even on their first touchdown drive, or the last one of the first half, I was thinking their first touchdown drive, the first of two in a row that they had, they weren't afraid to throw the ball, and they were making the connections that they needed. And on the second drive, well, they were greatly assisted by the great Kick return by Trayvon Holder. Owls take over first and 10 at their own 40 yard line. And we get some whistles and flags. I believe we have a false start against Westfield State. The play clock actually hit zero. Delay of game against Westfield State. That is also a foul. You can't do that either. And it's the same penalty regardless, five yards. So Westfield will have to start by gaining 15 on first down. That is really tough, a delay of game after a turnover of possession. You've got all the time in the world to draw up your first play, don't you? Now play action, Cassidy is in a lot of trouble and Cassidy is spun down. Kiambu Jones with the sack. The way that play developed, it looked like he wanted to get a handoff in there, but maybe a bit of miscommunication and turned into a broken triple option. I think that's what it was. Cassidy, I think that was always an option play, but Cassidy didn't wait long enough selling the option. He made the decision to pull it back before the receiver had even come up to the ball. Didn't fool Kiambo Jones, who gets the sack there for the green and gold. It's a loss of four, brings up second down and 19. Now a pitch to Holder on the far side. Falcon defense does a good job keeping contained. Bubba Lynch gets credit for the tackle runs Holder out of bounds after a loss of a few yards, and there is another injured Falcon down around midfield. That is Kiamu Jones, but I think a little worse was one of the Westfield coaches got run over on that play. Kiambu Jones heads off under his own power, but there is, as you said, a Westfield coach down on the far side. And one of the Falcons trainers crossing the field to help out here as well. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of chaos on the sidelines here and you don't expect any given play to come down, you know, coming back at you. That play was a loss of a couple of yards. You know, that's always one of the challenges when you're on the sidelines there. You've got to be aware of the play and you've got to be ready to get out of the way 
if the play is coming towards you. Yeah, you know, Dan, we, you know, we've made light of it a few times, but you actually do have experience down there on the sideline. Can you give a little insight onto, you know, what's it like for, say, a coach down there? Well, you know, what are they doing? Are, they're not necessarily all focused immediately on the play, even as the ball is live, right? Yeah, sometimes there is sort of a lot of jobs that they're juggling on the sidelines, and they have brought a stretcher out as well. Well, I know there's also that safe distance that the referees always ask the coaches and players to stay back. I mean, you occasionally see sideline warnings given out. That's not only just to give the chain crew room to work on the sidelines, but it's also to give them a little more of a buffer, a little more time to react right. when the play is coming towards you. But, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, that's that safe distance is... It's what, three yards, maybe? It's not a whole lot. It's just enough to give you a split second. And even the one time I got taken down on the sidelines, I was much closer to the track than I was the field. Right. I was probably about eight yards. Yeah, you away weren't even the working field. the chains. You were just kind of there, yeah, right? I was working the uh, official's clipboard that game. Right. And so I didn't have to drop anything to run out of the way. But sometimes the play comes to you in yeah, an unexpected sometimes it's, way. Yeah, it's just there. It's right on top of you, and it's, you know, you know, obviously we send our best to the Westfield State team. And they're actually going to pull the players off the field here, give them a little bit more space. Folks, if you're just joining us, you, you know, you can see the score up there, it is 34 to 13, Westfield State leading Fitchburg State. The story right now, there's been an injury on the far sideline to a member of the Westfield State coaching staff. John Googerty, Dan Bolak here with you on the call for Fitchburg Access TV. And of course, we do want to thank the all volunteer crew of Fitchburg Access Television doing a great job, as always, bringing you the uh, video and audio of this one. Our director is John Dextres. Dave Oster, Travis Falk doing an admirable job. Travis was actually called in at the last minute doing a technical support for us today. And you know, we want to thank our camera operators as well. Another large contingent of camera operators having come to help us here on a wonderful Friday night. Every week there's, an, there's at least two or three new names. You know, it's, it's one of the things we're really proud of here at Fitchburg Access Television, you know, obviously working in partnership with Fitchburg State University. You know, there are so many talented, enterprising kids who want to volunteer, who want to help out, and we are always happy to do that. It's one of the best places to get experience on one of these broadcasts. Yeah, and, you know, you think about, yeah, I know there are FATV Fitchburg State alums who have gone all over, all over the place, rather. You know, Nate Glennie does directing for high school football for us. His day job, he works for freaking Fox Sports New England. Works for one of the, works Comcast for Fox. Sportsnet, I think they're called now. Yes, yeah, so he does work. He does do some freelance for Fox Sports. I remember earlier this year when we did one of the ice hockey games, he had just come from doing, I believe, a college basketball game for Fox Sports 1 in Providence. Mm -hmm. So he did double duty that day for us, and he's one of our prouder members as well to have along. And, you know, I remember, you know, this is getting back a few years now, but back when I was first starting as a volunteer, there was one of our regular camera operators, a woman named Robin, who worked for Nesson regularly covering Red Sox games, and she still came, came back to FATV. It's great to have, you know, we saw Malcolm Brown Simpson, I know not an FATV alumnus, but a Fitchburg State football alumnus. And it's great to see alumnus come back, whether it be to Fitchburg State or to FATV. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of the alums or perhaps the soon-to-be alums, we would be remiss if we didn't mention our next. Well, first of all, that is a very good sign seeing there, you know, Coach giving the thumbs up at least. Hopefully he will be all right. And again, our thoughts go out to Westfield State. We're sending our best to you. But um, real quick, our next broadcast will be, uh, our next Falcon broadcast at least, will be not this Saturday or two weeks from now. It will be October the 27th. It'll be senior day here at Elliott Field. It's the Falcons take on Westcom. But now we're going to get back to live action here. It is third down and 21 for Westfield State. 
They need to get all the way up to midfield. They're going to spot the ball at their own 29-yard line. Owls just now getting the huddle together. Fitchburg State's defense is on the verge, Dan, of what would be a really big stop, give their offense the ball back after their second scoring drive of this game. Absolutely. Obviously, we've had a quite a long stoppage here, so I guess the thought that also comes to my mind is how the teams are going to come out after this. So third and 21, Westfield State comes out with four wide receivers. Cassidy takes the snap, straight drop. He's under pressure, rolls to his right, dumps it off, pass is complete. Trayvon Holder, the catch. He's across the 40. There is a flag down. Holder is fighting and fighting and finally brought down just a yard shy of the first down marker, but we will check the foul, see what that is. Now, obviously, if this is against the Falcons, it would be a big swing. If it's against Westfield State, probably results in them kicking it away. So it's a block in the back indicated against the Owls. And no. the, the referee just indicated that they're going to replay third down, which I don't, I'm confused. So it looks like the Falcons chose to accept the penalty and take 10 yards off, but it remained third down, so. But they gained seven yards. <laughs> As opposed to going forward on fourth and nearly a couple and the play clock ran out again. Owls were actually able to get their second timeout off Saw Jake Cassidy frantically realize that the play clock was expiring. And Dan, I am still very confused. It was third down and 21. They ran a play. Yep. I think it's one they of those, gained a few yards. I think it ended up being one of those live ball fouls such as holding. Right. Where so the penalty was assessed 10 yards from the spot of the foul and repeating the down. Yes. Which allowed for what was, say, a 17-yard gain at the spot of the foul to turn into still a seven-yard gain and repeat the down. So I understand that. And the Falcons could have chosen to decline the penalty and take a fourth in probably three or two or whatever, but they didn't want to take that chance. But that risked Westfield State going for it on fourth down, converting the fourth down, and keeping the football. Okay, I understand that now. Thank you. So 7.52 to go in the third quarter. Westfield only has one timeout left to work with. We'll see if that comes into play later. As we know, Mass Maritime had an issue with timeouts a couple weeks ago. Led to them having to try to make big drives with no timeouts to work with. After last week's game against Marlboro, don't talk to me about timeouts for a while. Third down and 14 for the Owls. Cassidy back to pass, looking. Rolls to his left, now throws left. Pass is incomplete. Closest man to it was Taj Coakley. But after all of that, you know, the injury stoppages, the timeouts, really Cassidy had all the time in the world to throw, just good downfield coverage by the Falcons. Finally just threw it away, basically. Westfield State will kick it away. Again, the Falcons going with the two receivers in the back there with Acosta and Lawton. Kick is away. Flag down, fair catch called for and made. The flag was thrown by the back judge. It was thrown behind the return men. Well away from the play. And it was thrown basically at the snap. Makes me think perhaps uh, Westfield State was lined up in an illegal formation. Well, the officials will have their discussion, and they'll try to get on the same page, figure out what's gone wrong here. There is no foul. All right. 
So Fitchburg State will take over first and 10 at their own 31 yard line. Brandon Brown and the offense will look to strike back after their last possession ended in seven points. Falcons come out with four wide receivers. Only Sterling Garvin in the backfield for Fitchburg State. Trips to the near side, one man split out wide to the far. Brandon Brown takes the snap. Quick pass to the near side is complete. Herbert Acosta the catch. Acosta's into the open field. He's got a first down and more. Mark him down at the 45, call it the 46 yard line. And it's good for a Fitchburg first down. As the season's gone on, Brown has become more comfortable with throwing check downs to the near side or the far side. Those short passes to try to get big yards with the player already basically at the flank. And Acosta is able to cut across and get 13. Now Fitchburg looking for the big hitter to the near side. That is complete. The Brown to Brown connection strikes again. Jesse Brown with the catch. He's out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. It's a gain of 33 for Fitchburg. This time a traditional deep ball for from Brandon Brown to Jesse Brown and floated in there quite nicely, I might add. It's a very well thrown, brawl, thrown ball by Brandon Brown. Jesse Brown makes the good catch. First and 10 Falcons at the 22 yard line. Handoff goes to Sterling Garvin, gets a little bit of a block, finds a hole on the left side and he's brought down after a gain of about five. Give the tackle to Andrew Carpenter. We've called his name plenty of times on the Owl defense. Carpenter came in tonight with 32 tackles or six a game, the way it's been shaking out for him. This time a run to keep the Owls honest. Back to live action now. Brown looking for the end zone. He's got Jesse Brown there. Passes underthrown and incomplete. Pretty good coverage for Westfield State. James English on the coverage. Nothing Jesse Brown could do about that one. English came in tonight with five pass breakups on the campaign as well, including an interception. And that time doing well to track it. We see it on the replay. This wasn't quite there, at least, although Brown, I mean, English had his back to the ball. He was at least putting his hand up, trying to make a play on the football. And he was a bit closer to it than Jesse Brown was as well. Now third down and five for Fitchburg State. Got to think this is four down territory for them. Motion to the near side, play action. Brown looks to his right now, keeps it up the middle. He's across the 15 yard line. He's got a first down and he is tackled. Actually, excuse me, he's short of the line to gain. It's a gain of about three. It'll be fourth down and about two for the Falcons. Boy, the way it was set up, it looked like he didn't have to get that much, but he was running so much parallel to the lines. And he starts so far back out of the pistol that it felt like he'd gotten enough for the first, but he really hadn't. He'd only gotten a few yards. Thank you for covering for me, Dan. Fourth down and two. Fitchburg State goes for it. Two backs, three receivers. Brown looks to his left, throws to his left. Catch is made. Jesse Brown has the reception. They're spotting him right at the 10-yard line. That's good for a Fitchburg first down. Just the quick little hitch to Jesse Brown gets all the yardage they need. Take a look at the replay, Dan. A quick throw across, and Brown able to pull it in. Greatly contested there. Back to live action, a run up the middle by Garvin. Doesn't go too much of anywhere for the Falcons. Brings up second down, again in four down territory. The Falcons may be down by three scores, but they are not out of it, not quite yet. The catch by Jesse Brown was made just inside the 10 yard line. So that means it is second down and goal now. The ball spotted at the 10 for Fitchburg State. Two backs, three receivers. Brown takes the snap, looks to his left, throws left. Sterling Garvin the catch. Garvin trying to make something happen. Really not much doing there. Give the official tackle to Brandon Rivera, but there were three owls all over the lone Falcon ball carrier. In that case, just trying to get it to the far side. Again, if you're trying to stretch the Owl defense out, hopefully not a lot of players there, but that time the Owl was able to get past Garvin. Third down and goal. Brown throws to the left for Jesse Brown. Pass is low, but the catch is made. Touchdown, Fitchburg State. The Brown to Brown connection 4-6 this time. 
a quick throw to the end zone, and Brown able to come back across and pull that one in. There really is no mystery when Fitchburg State goes to the air. Brandon Brown has a favorite target. He locks onto him immediately and uncorks a laser beam. Pass was a little low, but Jesse Brown does a good job getting his hands under it. Now the extra point from Bubba Lynch. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up, and it is good. 4-12 to play in this one. The Falcons have made it a two-score game. 34-20, Westfield State still on top. So now the Falcons with consecutive touchdowns and 4-12 to play in this third quarter. They're making it competitive. They're staying in it. They put themselves in a bit of a hole, but they are, they are working on getting it back. The defense has gotten a couple of big stops. The offense has come alive at the most important time. A game that looked to be completely out of reach a minute and a half into the third quarter has suddenly gone all in the Falcons' direction over the last nine minutes of action. Now, it's hard to believe, but just nine minutes ago, it was 34-6, to six, and we were saying, is there any silver lining? Is there anything Fitchburg State can do? And now they're within two scores. They're finding the silver linings. They're creating them. They are manufacturing them. Bubba Lynch's kickoff is taken in at about the 15-yard line. No deception on the return this time. Brought out to about the 28-yard line for Westfield State. It was Justin McCray who had the return, the freshman from East Park for Connecticut. Only his fourth kick return of the campaign. And now, Dan, let's flip the script and look at it from Pete Kowalski's perspective. You know, the fifth season head coach for Westfield State. He has seen his team go out to this enormous lead, but now it is slowly slipping away. Do you think panic is setting in at all, or are they just going to come out, run their offense, and try to make something happen? I would think that as long as they feel they can trust Trayvon Holder to get some consistent yards, they're not going to worry too much. It is Trayvon Holder the carry on first down, and he rewards that faith. Trayvon Holder's across midfield before being dragged down. A gain of about 23 yards for Holder. Just like that, the Owl offense is on the move thanks to the senior from Hartford. And that's what I've been saying too. The Falcons have struggled to stop Trayvon Holder tonight. He's well over his average per game. He averages 112 a contest. And he's well over that now. First and 10 Owls at the midfield stripe. Play action fake. Cassidy loses the football, but picks it up. He is brought down at the line of scrimmage. Samuel Kenny was applying pressure for Fitchburg State. I don't think he knocked the ball loose, though, so much as Cassidy just dropped it. You see there, he just didn't have the handle. And coming into tonight, Cassidy had fumbled the football eight times, half of those he lost. So 50-50 proposition that the Falcons would get it on that fumble. That time, they lost the coin toss. Second down and 11 after the loss on the fumble. Handoff goes to the left side. Guess who's the ball carrier? Tavon Holder is brought down after a gain of about three. It'll be third and eight now for the Owls. Gets the ball into Fitchburg territory. That's something to focus on. You know, Malcolm Brown Simpson said it during halftime. Try to do a little more work on the outside. Try to force the Owls to come back inside and let the linebackers do their job. And on that one, the Falcons were able to force him to the outside, but they had the personnel there to stop Holder and hold him to just three yards. Third down and eight for Westfield State. They're at the Falcon 48-yard line. They need the 40. Handoff goes to Trayvon Holder. He's into the second level, but he's brought down there. It's a gain of only three. Falcon defense standing tall thus far. And now a very interesting decision for Westfield State. They will send on the punting unit. So, and on that play, just as I said at that time, they go up the middle, and that time the linebacker's able to do their job, hold Holder to just three yards, prevent him from getting the first down. And now Cody Cleveland back on the field for Westfield State, punted away. Cleveland with a chance to pin the Falcons deep. 
Jim McGuire sprinting up the near sideline, trying to call timeout. He does get the timeout called. Fitchburg State takes their first of the half with 1.40 to play here in the third quarter. A very intriguing contest this has turned out to be. The Falcons getting a big stop. And now it's gonna be down to seeing how Cody Cleveland could perhaps pin the Falcons deep. The Falcons will have Acosta and Lawton back there. 1.40 to go, 34 for Westfield, 24 Fitchburg. Seeing how comfortable Brandon Brown has gotten throwing the ball. He's now 13 for 16 on the night for 174 yards. Really, the yardage has been, even when Brandon Brown has been accurate, the yardage has been lacking because they've been relying exclusively on those little short passes, the quick slants, the dump offs, the screens. But we have seen a few more deep balls and some of them have hit. So that's another element that the Falcon offense has added. 174 yards, a career high in his young career. Kick is away. Spiraling, taken in at the 10 yard line, trying to make a return out of it. Stephen Lawton's brought down at the 17 after a return of only about seven yards. Then again, it's like if he fair caught it at the 10 yard line, what would I mean, that that's, get you? That's not gonna get you much. See Lawton there being attended to on the near sideline, might have tweaked that left leg. Yeah. We notice Kevin Quinn there, he's got a lot of street clothes on, not playing in this contest. He's normally, he's been normally the punt returner for the Falcons, possibly one of the reasons why they have two of them tonight in Acosta and Lott. So now Fitchburg State pretty deep in their own territory, first and 10 at the 17. Brown throws to the right side, passes high, but it is caught, Osand with the catch. It's a gain of about nine for the freshman receiver. We're saying too, he's getting a little more comfortable throwing out there. And Paulo Sand, who came into this game with no career receptions already now with two, started to become a bit of a trusted target on that side. Second down and one for Fitchburg State. Play action fake. Brown keeps it himself. He's got the first down. Not much more than that. It's across the 30. Mark him down at the 32 yard line. Winds up as a gain of about seven or eight yards and a Fitchburg first down. Brown's been pretty solid when running the football this season. Averaging about six yards a carry gets the six or so he needs to get that first down. First and 10 Falcons, 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Brown looking to his left, wanted to go long. Now he's under pressure. Now he does throw it long. That is a lofting, floating ball and it is intercepted. Picked off by Westfield State. James English with the pick. And just when everything is going the Falcons way, Again, it's a turnover. The third one of the night by Brandon Brown. This one perhaps the most costly of all. A bit of an ill-advised throw, I do think. He was able to break out of that tackle. He wasn't gonna get much yardage if he ran with it. And he ended up throwing it into double coverage to a receiver who's only five feet, four inches tall. And that ball just floated up there forever. Elijah Ellis and James English were there. I think English was the one who came down with the pick. Just towering over Acosta. It was going to be a tough ask. Westfield State has it first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. Brought down in the backfield is Trayvon Holder. After a loss of about three, Falcon defense looking to stand tall here, give the offense the ball back. Still down just two scores even after the turnover. I know the Owls have been sort of rotating between Trayvon Holder and R.J. Darby, but it's possible the Owls may be starting to think that with Fitchburg starting to climb back into this game, they have to trust Holder a little more. They have to keep feeding him the rock. And the problem may be Holder may be starting to get wound down a little bit. He might be starting to get a bit tired, and that may make things a bit more challenging for the Owls if their number one running back option is having trouble gaining yardage. That could also open the door for Fitchburg to get right back into this one. And well, they are pretty much back into this one. It's still a two score game, but 34-20 is a lot more optimistic than it was about 20 so minutes ago. And getting back to your point, Dan, about Trayvon Holder possibly getting run down, there's also the fact that Fitchburg State's defense, they know pretty much Westfield State wants to hand it off. They are not confident 
with Cassidy dropping back and throwing the ball. He's had a little bit of success tonight, but really not that much, not much over the course of the season. We've seen the Falcons get a little more aggressive in the run defense. It's gonna be incumbent on Westfield State. Maybe rather than handing it off, maybe they just try a few pitch plays or something, try to spread that Falcon defense out as they look to run out the remaining 15 minutes of this game. It's gonna be something to look for for Westfield. Cassidy is three for five through the air tonight for 50 yards. But as we mentioned, only 45% completion percentage on the campaign. It's something that has plagued Westfield is just they've not been terribly comfortable throwing the football downfield. And maybe like how Fitchburg has become a little more comfortable throwing the ball, maybe Westfield may need to start becoming a little more comfortable throwing the football. However, for Westfield on this play, Trayvon Holder uses that little bit of the three-quarter time break to get a breather and then get 13 yards and get a first down. So just like that, Holder gets the carry and he's able to get the big gain there. You see, he's got a great hole. There's really nothing super creative he has to do with the ball. He just has to follow his blockers and he's able to get the first down. And now for Westfield State, it's as much about controlling the ball and grinding down this clock as it is about gaining yardage and putting points on the board. So first and 10, it'll be Holder again. Goes to the right side, wrapped up, but he's still on his feet. He's able to get a couple of yards out of it. Down short of midfield. They'll mark it at the Westfield 49 yard line to gain of three yards. And really, Daniel, gain of three yards. Both teams a little happy with that, at least. You know, Fitchburg State containing Holder, preventing him from gaining the big play. But for Westfield State, Holder was hit basically at the line. It was a good job by him to get the three yards that he did. On second and seven. We have a familiar formation for the Owls. And this time, it's a big game for Trayvon Holder. And it's a great effort by the Westfield O-line, just overpowering the Falcons' D-line and pushing them backwards and backwards. It felt like Holder was able to run a good few yards before he actually had to deal with any contact. Absolutely, Dan. The entire offensive line for Westfield State got a fantastic push, and Holder was just running behind them and among them, and he was able to take the ball into Falcon territory, pick up the first down, really without being threatened at all. Holder heads to the sidelines. Now R.J. Darby checks back in to the Westfield State backfield. Darby's only been able to average about half of what Holder's been able to tonight. And on first down, he gets a yard. One singular yard. And even that may be generous. Samuel Kenny and Wendell Lubin applying pressure for the Falcons. We'll take a look at this one again. Darby runs up the middle. Just the blocking wasn't there for whatever reason. You know, Kenny, Lubin, Kiambu Jones was there. Richard Austin Jr. as well. Good read by the Falcons. Maybe knowing they need to step up a little more, knowing that Darby's in the backfield. Darby's not as good as Holder. I know he wouldn't want to hear that if I told that to him to his face, but. Well, we're several yards away from him, it's fine. Yeah, he can't hear me anyway. On second down, pushing forward, gets about three or four yards on that one. It'll bring up third down. Sets up third and five for Westfield State. Lendl Lubin heads to the sidelines for the Falcons. They'll get another defensive lineman in there. This time a little bit better blocking by the Owl offensive line. Now really, Dan, a lot of the blocking has been done by Leo Clinton Jr. Out of that fullback position for Westfield State most of the night. Now Holder back in on third down. They were saving him for a big moment like that, and he delivered another first down for Westfield State. The big third down conversion for the Owls. And there really is nothing fancy about it. They just line up in the same formation they've been running all night, and they run Holder right there behind Clinton, gets the lead block, and he's into the second level with nobody touching him. 
and then it's just a matter of how much more can you get. Just gives them that extra blocker, Leo Clinton Jr. does, or whoever is in the backfield as a fullback for Westfield State. Now cutting back is Holder again. The ball's on the there. ground. A potential fumble here. It'll only be the second time he's fumbled the ball all year. I think the Owls fell on it. David Morales forcing the fumble, and they are indicating second down, so Westfield State falls on the loose ball again. Bit of drama there, but Westfield able to come away with the football. Third time tonight they fumbled it, but they've been lucky. They have not lost any of those fumbles. And we get a chance to look at the replay here. Morales does a good job, lowers his head, just hits the football. And then one of the uh, one of the linemen, that might have actually been Clinton, who wound up picking it up for the Owls. Now it's second down and eight. We'll give it to Holder again, goes to the right side. Trying to get that second effort there. Gets a couple more yards, it's not gonna be enough for a first. It's not going to be enough for a first down, but it is going to be third down in about three, as opposed to what it could have been. Holder was hit at probably the 24-yard line, but the tackle wasn't made. It was just a good low hit to the legs of Holder, and a great job by him to maintain his balance and plunge forward. Picked up another three yards, sets up a very manageable third down and four for Westfield State. Westfield two of eight on third down tonight. The way they've been playing tonight, you feel they'd be better than that, right? This would be a big one if they can get it. Holder bursting through the middle of the line. Very close to the sticks. I think he has the first down. I believe he's got it as well. Based on where the lineman is, but could be parallax. They still haven't moved the chains. Holder will come off the field holding his helmet in hand. They're going to move the chains. First down, Owls. That is a big first down there. It kills a couple more minutes of clock as well. Time starting to run out for the Falcons. Much of that third quarter was spent on what you would think would be an improbable comeback. And then right at the death of the quarter, the interception by Brown, and now Westfield State with this clock-killing drive to follow. On first down, R.J. Darby goes nowhere, and let's see if they call a late hit on that. I see no flags. I see none as well. We'll say that the Falcon coming in with the second effort had already committed to the tackle and the whistle had blown. And frankly, Dan, I think that was a good call. You know, Darby, his forward momentum was stopped, but the whistle came in a little late. I think by the time the tackler had lowered his shoulder, the whistle hadn't blown. So, you know, he delivered the hit. He didn't drive him into the turf or anything. I think it's a good no call, to be honest with you. And I think I was more or less just saying, well, let's see if that's what happens, because it feels like that's what usually happens. But nonetheless, on second down, Darby's got it again. Finds a little more progress this time. Good second effort by Darby. Gets back across the initial line of scrimmage and a few more than that. It's now third down and about six. Let a scrimmage to the 14 yard line. You gotta get about to the seven yard line for a first down. So third and seven, we'll say. I said third and six, and the scoreboard says third and six, and the graphic says third and six, but it could also be third and seven. It's third and a long six. We'll go with that. Yay, I win. Again, the familiar formation, three receivers, although no linebacker this time, and Caspi will take it himself. Runs around to the left side. He's got an opening. He's got a touchdown. Westfield State has been so judicious just parceling out those quarterback runs, 
one here, one there, you get to the point where you completely forget that Jake Cassidy is a very mobile quarterback. And then on third and six, one of the most important third downs of the entire game, they bust out the play action QB keeper. Cassidy goes in, he's untouched until the dive for the end zone, and he gets the touchdown to salt this one away. And on the extra points, Corey Pooler will find success. 7.05 to go, fourth quarter. Fitchburg 20, Westfield 41. That is just such a good play call by Westfield State. And it's not just that call in a vacuum, which on its own was great, but as it fits into the play calling of the entire game. Cassidy's kept it himself, what, four times tonight, if that? Yeah, it's like you've got to try to cancel out the sacks because they call sacks negative rushes and but my point is he has not taken it off taken off and run with it you know once or twice a possession even yep. so if we take out the sacks that would have been his eighth rushing attempt of the night feels like a lot more than you'd expect but they've been using those as you said you know with i can't think of a good word for that <laughs> point is it, i think it was a very good play call it obviously worked to perfection and as I said, it basically puts this game away, puts it back up to a three-score lead for the Owls, less than half a quarter to go. Tamaketti will pull it in for the Falcons. Runs out to the far side, trying to find the opening there. He's not able to get to the far side. He's making the tackle is Stephen Workley. And now from the Westfield State perspective, it's just about containment. The only way the Falcons get back into this game is with a series of big plays. So I expect that we're gonna see Westfield State playing very conservatively on defense. They're gonna give the Falcons the quick check down completions, the handoffs up the middle for five yards. They're gonna be happy to let Fitchburg State do that and just keep the clock moving. First to 10, Falcons will go trips to the right side. Quick throw to the right side will go to Herbert Acosta. And Acosta tries to throw him over a tackle and he'll be down around the 30 yard line. A lot of running, but he only gains two yards on the hole. Ryan short the tackle for Westfield State, short the sophomore DB from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Got to call that out when I can. Love the hometown there, right? That's absolutely right. Second down. Brown looking to his right side, he's ready to throw. He wants a home run ball to Jesse Brown, and he can't pull it in. James English with the coverage there again, matching up with Jesse Brown. And that was an interesting uh, incompletion to say the least. Brown and English were going back and forth, hands slapping at each other all the way downfield. You see there, Jesse Brown gets a little bit of a push off, and I think he actually may have overrun that ball. It looks like he reached out for it, but the pass actually came back the campus and of hit Fitchburg him in the State back University. Shoulder. It hit him in the back of the helmet, I think, is what happened there. On third down, got to throw it. They will throw an interception. Well, that wasn't a good throw. It was picked off by the Owls, and it was taken in there by Brian Short. Throw right over the middle, and there's the Marlboro native. It's the best thing a Marlboro native has done on a football field in Fitchburg in at least a year. Just a quick throw there. Fourth turnover of the night for the Falcons, and it's gone back to that that uh, dew point that has gone the Falcons in trouble game in and game out is the turnovers have been costly. Westfield has scored a touchdown at all three of the Falcons' turnovers tonight. And wouldn't you know what the Falcons trail by three touchdowns? And that's been the difference in the game. And obviously, Dan, when a team scores 41 points, you cannot say that it comes down to a single player. It is worth mentioning all four of the Falcons' turnovers have been by Brandon Brown. So on first down, fumble! The Falcons have it. I think they might be saying he was down by contact, but clearly Fitchburg State came out of that with the ball. It happened so quickly, I didn't get a good look at what had happened there. They tried a lot of different things there. They brought Andrew Helcher into the game. He 
made the handoff there to Justin McRae. And second down. So the Falcons are able to legally recover the fumble as McRae was down before he'd lost it. See Westfield State going with the backups, and that includes McRae. Again, Westfield has been very lucky with the fumbles. <laughs> Had that counted as a fumble, it would have been their fourth of the night, but they would have recovered all of them. But ultimately, every time the ball has ended up on the ground out of an owl's hands, the play ends with them still having possession. McRae on this one. Maybe we'll get a good run there. McRae had 21 carries coming into tonight. Freshman from East Hartford. And you mentioned, you mentioned rather, Andrew Pelcher, the junior quarterback from Holyoke. He's the backup for Westfield State. And he's come in, get him some reps here. Try to finish this one off. Six for 15 through the air this season. Three carries for two yards as well. Pitches it out. They're going to the left side and getting nothing is once again McRae. Falcons get that stop on third down. And Westfield, I think, going to try to punch it away, just do the safe play here, up by 21 points. Try to pin Fitchburg as deep as they can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I have spent at least 5% of this broadcast complaining about teams deciding to punt this one. Falcons not going to bring Lawton out onto the field this time. It's just going to be Herbert Costa. Westfield State obviously taking as much time as they are allowed. Devontae Hart came out late there. Falcons need to make sure they had enough players, and it goes right to Hart. Hart's going to try to do something with this. Moving it up the near sideline. Still in bounds. And it gets past the 20 yard line. Hart wasn't on the field initially. I guess Lawton might be unfit to play at this moment. So we know he was a bit hurt after his last punt return. And it looked like for the moment, at the beginning of that play, Hart was about to run on the field, came back. He wasn't sure if they, if that would have been too many men. But right. I guess they counted. They came up with 10 on the field. So he did end up coming out on the field, ended up taking that one. As I guess, I think the way it bounced to him, he felt he had to take that in. He couldn't just jump out of the way. Otherwise, knowing his luck, it graze off him, go into the end zone. Westfield will jump on it. Boom, six. Well, yes. That would be the luck, right? That would be. First down. Brown looking. He's going to try to run with it. Brown's got some yards on this one. He'll go to the 37-yard line. Got himself a first down there. Try to take what he can get. Really nothing doing downfield. Good coverage by the Owls. So Brandon Brown, as you said, taking what he can get. Picks up the first down, move the chains. So once again, first down and 10. Brown, quick throw to the left side. That is pulled in by Acosta. Acosta getting to the far flank, and he's got some speed. Pushed out of bounds in Westfield territory around the 45-yard line. Another first down for Fitchburg. And Acosta comes up lame after that one. He'll be attended to. Tell you the training staffs have been busy tonight. It's, it's been a rough contest, and we know Acosta, he's been battling injuries all season as well. And we do have some word that the injured Westfield coach that was taken off on a stretcher was actually the head coach, Pete Kowalski. And so we hope the best for him, as we saw back yep. in the third quarter. Yeah, again, our, our thoughts go out to Pete Kowalski as well as everyone at Westfield State. And for that matter, now they go out to Herbert Acosta. And as you said, Dan, he's been battling injuries all season. He was battling injuries last year as well. Gets the reception here. It's just a quick pass out to the far side, trying to set up the screen. And then you can see there's plenty of coverage. It's finally pushed out of bounds there. Tough to tell exactly what it is, but you know, you got you got a whole bunch of big guys falling on you. Something might get her. You know, at the very end, the first 
one other thing I saw at the very end of the clip was Trayvon Holder walking over to Acosta to try to help him up. Mm -hmm. Acosta is walking off the field with minimal assistance. Well, you know, it, it, it's commendable the sportsmanship you see here at the D3 level. You know, none of these guys, for the most part, are going to go on and have lucrative professional football careers. For most of them, especially the seniors, this is as high as it gets. So, you know, it's always good to see, you know, these guys know that. And there is, you know, a little bit of camaraderie, even, you know, one of them's wearing white and one of them's wearing yellow. At the end of the day, they both know what it's like. I know early in the contest we were talking about how chippy this game was. That's really gone away, hasn't it? I think after the injury to Coach Kowalski, I think that really cooled the emotions down quite a lot. On first down, a throw to the far side. It is complete. Sterling Garvin able to pull that one in. Get about five more yards. Falcons getting a chance to run their hurry-up offense here. Even with the game out of reach, you've got a, a freshman quarterback, a young core. Always a good chance to get a practice in. There's no better time to practice things than you know during live game action. And Sterling Garvin's got a first down here. Down around the 30-yard line, put some spin moves on. Garvin trying to have a go at getting to about 100 yards on the night, along with his two touchdowns. Falcons will try to hurry it up here. There'll be another handoff. Garvin goes to the right side. Gets a few more yards there. Looks like the Falcons may be calling time here with 2.06 to go in the fourth quarter. If they're going to practice the two-minute offense or something of that nature, they have to use some timeouts. They might as well actually practice it. And part of that is strategic usages of your timeouts. They take their second of the half here. So 2.06 to go in the fourth quarter. 41 for Westfield, 20 for Fitchburg. Trayvon Holder, the big gainer for Westfield. 173 yards on 24 carries. Another excellent performance for him. Sterling Garvin now 18 carries for 81 yards. Brandon Brown, 17 for 23, 210, although the two interceptions. So, you know, pluses it, it, and minuses. Exactly, pluses and minuses. It really has been the story all year for the Falcons. As we've said a number of times, they are a young team. They have a, a freshman quarterback, a number of freshman players on both sides of the ball. So if you're looking at it from an optimistic perspective, you see the positives there. This is not a team without talent. It's just a matter of putting it all together for a full 60 minutes. Brown looking to the right side, wants that home run pass there. Hold up there, and when that ball was flying, I had no aspirations at all that Paulo Sand would get anywhere near it, and then suddenly he was 15 feet in the air, it felt like. Came very close to what would be an incredible catch, and hey, the Falcons are going to get a first down out of it because of a pass interference penalty against Westfield State. So the penalty will be capped to 15 yards, but boy, Osean had a really good look at that one, surprisingly enough. You know, we'll get a look at it on the replay here. It's just a jump ball in the end zone, and Osean leaps up there, and he is basically pushed away from the ball by Brian Short. Short was the man who pulled in the second interception for Brandon Brown tonight. That was on Fitchburg's last possession. That really was a prodigious leap by Paul Osain. A great effort at that one. Wasn't able to pull the acrobatic catch in. I was lost for words on that one. <laughs> so first to 10 after the DPI. Will be Garvin on the run. The Garvin runs into a blocker and goes not much of anywhere. the replay on this one and really just couldn't get around his own blocker and Connor Briggs. Now throw to the left side on second down. This is Jesse Brown. 
Brown trying to put the moves on, trying to make his way downfield. He's inside the five yard line. That is a great second and third effort by Jesse Brown. He makes the catch basically at the line of scrimmage and then it's all on him to pick up yards after the catch. We'll see it here, the quick pass to the near side, far side rather. He's got a couple of blockers in front of him, but right there he's hit at the seven and not tackled until the two. It's a great individual effort. They try to go with the delayed handoff here on first down. We've seen it work a lot, but it didn't work here. You know where it works, Dan? It works when you're at about the 40 yard line, when you can fake that the quarterback is dropping back, rolling to his right, looking for the deep hit and then you hand it off going to the left side and you've got the defense spread out. When you're that close to the goal line, a play like that is vulnerable to what we saw there, which is just Westfield State converging, collapsing on it, tackling him for a loss. Second down, quick throw, left side, off the fingertips and incomplete, he wanted Osand. So the third down, just a thought that comes into my head, I know a few weeks ago, Fitchburg was playing Worcester. Of course, the stakes were a lot higher. It was 22-16 Worcester. Fitchburg was in this position where they could score from very close in. Ultimately, weren't able to pull it in. This is sort of a second chance at the same procedure, just it's not really for, the, for a tire for the win. It's just to see if you can score. And so on third down, Brown rolling to his right, still going with it. He's going to have a go at it, try to go to the end zone. There is a flag on the field, and... Brown will be taken down at around the, inside the five yard line, but we'll see what the flag is first. Now play taking that long to develop and ending up with a quarterback run, you could very easily see an ineligible man downfield, a block in the back, or you know, a defensive hold is always possible. It is a defensive hold. It's always possible. Falcons will get half the distance and a first. Now with the 20 points they've already put on the board tonight, Dan, that, that is the second highest point total of the season for Fitchburg State. They weren't able to get higher than 16 points in their first four games of the season. Obviously we saw the 36-20 victory over Mass Maritime. So Fitchburg State's offense coming alive a bit today, trying to put yet more points on the board. They still have one timeout to work with. Ball is placed at the two yard line. And Brown rolling to the left, trying to cut back in, trying to go to the end zone. He's he, got it. He will get there. Touchdown Falcons. It's a designed quarterback run all the way. They roll Brandon Brown out to the left and he does not even fake like he's gonna throw it. They just trying to get him in the open field, matched up one on one with a linebacker and he is able to put the move on the man and get in the end zone for the touchdown. It's a good little open field run for Brandon Brown. And now a big problem with the death charts. Uh, Brown actually has to come back on the field to be the holder for the extra point because it was Acosta who was doing the holding. Brown is the, I believe, third string holder for the Falcons. Something like that. But he executes his job just there, and Bubba Lynch continues to be really the story of the season on special teams for the Falcons. Puts through, I believe, his third extra point of the game. Indeed. And we'll take another look at the touchdown. Right there, that play is designed to get the blitzing linebacker from the right side to bite on the play fake. That play fake is executed successfully, gets Brandon Brown into the open field, and from there, he is very difficult to bring down. Of course, on the extra point, I mean, the death chart went, you know, Connor Fitzsimons is the primary holder, but because of the injury to Kyrie Watford, he is now the snapper, and Acosta was taking the second string. But now that he's gotten hurt, now we have to go to Brandon Brown as the holder. And he did his job admirably. Just kind of interesting when you have Bubba Lynch ready to kick an extra point and there's nobody there to hold the football. So now a question, with 19 seconds left, I know the Falcons almost certainly cannot score two touchdowns in 19 seconds. Do you still try the onside kick anyway? Uh, yeah, sure why yeah, not. Just for practice? Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, there's a mathematical chance, right? There is a mathematical chance. There you go. 
recover the onside kick, Hail Mary touchdown, recover the onside kick, Hail Mary touchdown, we go to overtime and play football until dawn. I like it. It can be done. There are seven people laughing at me in the press box right now. They don't like it, but you know. The, the, the ball didn't go out of bounds. The Falcons got it. I think it went out of bounds first. Well, there is a flag right at the spot where the ball would have gone out of bounds. So I think they did. It looked like Westfield had given up on the football and was just going to let it go out of bounds. And why do you really need to bother with an onside kick? You're up by 14 with 15 seconds left. Yeah, pretty much. They're probably just going to let Fitchburg have that one if they were going to recover it, considering where it was going. And, oh, yeah, he was actually standing out of bounds. Jesse Brown was when he pulled it in. That would mark the ball out of bounds, yes. If, and that would make it a kick out of bounds as well. Indeed. And that is the indication. So Westfield will have the ball. They'll probably take a knee and end this contest. But one would think. If ultimately, I guess the story of the game was turnovers. The Falcons turned it over four times. Westfield fumbled it three or four times, depending on how you want to count things, and didn't lose the football in any of those circumstances. But the Falcons found themselves just losing it too many times. They gave up 21 points on turnovers, and ultimately, that's what did them in as the Owls take it under the lights here at Elliott Field by a score of 41 to 27. And really, Dan, it gets back to what you said, pluses and minuses. Pluses for the Falcons, they put 27 points on the board. By all rights, they looked dead a minute and a half into the third quarter, and they made it an entertaining, exciting contest. There are definitely reasons for optimism and things to look forward to. And of course, there are the minuses. You know, they had four turnovers. The defense allowed 41 points. You can't ignore these things and only look at the positives. But for the overall picture of, you know, where, did, where are the Falcons going to be in two, three, four years, I think you have to be optimistic right now. I think so as well. I mean, a lot of great aspects to the game, a lot of ugly aspects to the game. Ultimately, it's a 14-point game. 41-27 is the final. Westfield goes to 4-3. They're above 500 for the first time all season long, and the Falcons will fall 2-1-6. and six. Westfield will have Framingham next Saturday at 2 o'clock at home for them. Pittsburgh will battle the bye next week before Senior Day on the 27th against West Vaughn. That'll be a 2 o'clock start. We'll have it for you right here on FATV. And that will be, as you said, Saturday, October the 27th. Our next telecast comes to you next Friday night. It is the Red Raiders of Fitchburg State taking on Groton Dunstable. That will be a 7 o'clock kickoff from historic Crocker Field. Folks, we look forward to having you there. We look forward to seeing you here at Elliott Field for Senior Day. But for right now, for the all-volunteer crew, of Fitchburg Access Television, Amanda Agassi, of course, my broadcast colleague, Danny Bolak. I'm John Gugarty saying thank you so much for joining with us, and we will see you next time right here on FATV.